So here we are once again. How exciting. And Maricot Double Dash will be the, the companion for this. Of unlike course. so many others. Yeah. It's just it's just a game that just keeps on giving. Much like it's all the other things on Dolphin apparently. Uh, that was a good era for video games. Welcome to us trying to catch up Super Chats, a series. And now Hello. we're doing ones that relate to that episode we talked about the Snyder Cut slash Justice League. Those uh, were good times. Those were times. Those were those were certainly times. That was that was a while times ago now. They were. I'm gonna test our uh, them. our memory of that movie, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh yeah, it was yeah. Justice League. That was the good one, right? The really good movie that everyone yes, liked. The Snyder a Cut, lot. a fantastic really film. That was the short one that was very succinct and mm -hmm. didn't waste our time. Nothing superfluous remember, or unnecessary. An artistic endeavor. It was really endeavor. cheery. It was upbeat. You know, I, I felt really... It was even a black and white version. Thank goodness. That's art. Yeah, that's how you know. So, we'll get started. Um, I can't quite tell if this is the correct order. I simply hope it is, because uh, I usually look for things that can kind of give it away. Like, the opening few involve, like, highs and hellos. While the last few involve like, oh, just before you go, but I can't really see spot any. So. Well, because yeah, there's usually some really pointed, specific uh, ones, you know. Yes. So um, hopefully this is in the right order, but ultimately it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. So number one, it says traitor. You're letting the French win. That's not good. No, I don't, I don't remember when we did, win. but uh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, we didn't. Know Someone, someone messed up somewhere. But now that I've caught up to EFAP from EFAP 1, I have to listen to it all at normal speed. Y'all sound drunk as hell. I'm gonna join that train and see if it helps. Cheers. Um, I think I, I, I mentioned to you guys before, when I watch something in two times for long enough, when I go back to one times, it actually feels a little bit like they're in slow motion. Um, yeah, no, I, I, it definitely is a thing, I think. We're well, getting used to in it. Yeah. Uh, Interstellar Raider, I think they mean Ranger, commence. Sounds like someone who doesn't watch anime making up an anime name. I don't agree. <laughs> I, I think that there's a lot of cringy anime names. Uh, also, Brown Table totally watches anime. He's made videos about it. Just, um, yeah, I don't doubt that he watches anime. That's, that's well, the root of all evil. They're saying that um, only someone who doesn't watch anime trying to make an anime name would have come up with Interstellar Ranger Commence. Which, I just think that... I think so. I, I don't. Think so. I think so. Nah, I think that I they could have... So. They could have absolutely come up with that. No, it's they didn't not could, watch anime, did. Oh, they did? Like, someone who didn't watch anime who wants to come up with an anime name comes up with that. I'm saying, no, 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 you get both. What do you think is happening here? You crazy doggo. No, I I agree with the the I agree with the spirit of the super chatter. Um, why? I didn't realize you'd be so defensive over anime titles. No, I I believe that this is it's the kind of the anime that he made has an anime name that sounds very very anime. So even who even someone who doesn't watch anime would be like, oh. Even I know that's like a stereotypical kind of anime name, so they would come up with it. Well, that's not what the Super Chat said. The Super Chat said it sounds like someone who doesn't know but about anime made up that name. It would I, can, seem I can read it again if you want. Understood. Yeah, yeah. The chat. Does Interstellar Ranger Commence sounds like someone who doesn't watch anime making up an anime name. And I think the point that Muller and I yeah. making is, nah, it doesn't. It seems like in it does seem like an anime name for. A yeah, show. I've seen plenty of anime names. Well, that look I like think that. I think both of us. I think we are all in agreement on one aspect, but I think that the conclusion I am taking to mean that if something, for instance, if if there is a very stereotypical anime title convention, even people who do not watch anime might be aware of it. Feels like a non sequitur. I don't really. understand how it's like, what's it got to do with the <laughs> point. So people who don't know anime names would be able to recognize that Interstellar Ranger Commence is an anime name. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That's so not what the Super Chat's saying, though. The Super Chat said that it sounds like a name that someone who didn't watch anime would come up with. Yeah. 
yeah, as yeah. in the person who made it, not any sort of appeal to an audience person and their understanding made, of anime conventions. The person who made, made the title Interstellar Ranger Commence. But yeah. the person, it sounds like... I, I don't know It's I don't know why you're getting so confused on this one. It, it, the point <laughs> is that I they're saying that it, it sounds like it. I, I think, it's, I think it all checks out. Yeah, I think it all checks out. I'm so lost at... Because what you're saying has yeah. nothing to do with what they've said. You what as a non-anime watcher, you in general, as an anime a non-anime watcher able to recognize anime names, that's got nothing to do with someone who doesn't watch anime clearly came up with this name. The implication of the super chat is that it's, uh, it's like a, f a fake anime fan. Oh, is that what they're implying? Oh, well, I, I don't think Brown Tail is a fake anime fan. That's like, the only thing I don't know how to even interpret anything implied. else. Yeah. That's why we were so baffled at your response. Yeah, and I, I'm that's why I'm defensively on Brown Table's part saying no, he watches a ton of anime. Oh yeah, I and I'm, he definitely watches a lot of anime. I think he's a big anime fan. I think he was hoping to make his own awesome anime, and he went with a name that I think fits just fine in with a lot of anime name choices, but there are way better ones. This is a like one punch man. Yeah. Like basically <laughs> anything else you could think of. Well, no, like, because One Punch Man is straight to the point. So he's a man and he fights people and he beats Well, yeah, one I punch agree. One Punch Man is better. I'm saying, like, I think that Interstellar Ranger Commence is so low in terms of names you could have picked that practically any other name would be better. Oh, yeah? Would Interstellar Marines be better? <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. That's yeah. kind of unreal, <laughs> actually, that we've got. I two... actually think so. What a coincidence that we've got that from those two. Why the pantheon? Two people the, the, who... The, 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 <laughs> coming from people who fancy two, themselves two things as big it's media aficionados. Well, because compared to... Because uh, we haven't covered Lindsay Alice on the show at all. We do intend to as a video I'm interested and, in. Right, that's but I, for, uh, I like that name. Um, it makes me uh, think yeah. about things. Axiom that's an interesting. It's an interesting name, for sure. Makes yeah. me think the idea is that your, your axiom itself can only go so far before it's broken. Um, I, I don't know if that book is about, but <laughs> I mean, yeah. at least it, it leaves room for speculation, I guess. The compared only books to, I care about are the books of Boba Fett. Interstellar Marines, where it's like, oh. Like, <laughs> well, that's not been a misinterpreted, right? <laughs> yeah, so that is like One Punch Man, I it gets to the point. Marines well, see, in space. One Punch Man as well I like because of uh, the, the, what's going on for him as a person, if you think about that yeah, title. Of course. Uh, it's it's relevant. Yeah, like, there, there's, there's more to dig out of it, but the, yep. the, I would say there is potentially more to dig out of Interstellar Marines and Interstellar Ranger Commence if we were to consume these, uh, these products slash pieces of entertainment who knows whereas one punch man you could that that has many interpretations like he only punched a single time is he he only did or he only punches once a fight or he he punched only once and does he regret it does he that like what, what's going i would on imagine that by man? the end of the opening of episode one you have it i've said <laughs> it by the end of episode one the answer to that question will already be an answered <laughs> at least oh, yeah that yeah, but even without, with just by the name alone, not knowing, That's you're real like, oh, like I can ask, yeah, yeah I, I can speculate as to what this is referring to. Interstellar Marines is just like, oh, they're just, I guess they fight stuff. The I don't Marines. know. Can you make the same argument though? You'd be like, does Interstellar Marines refer to how far they travel on the on the escapades, or that they chose the name Interstellar, irrelevant of the fact of it being accurate? Or what is Marines? Is that an official uh, designation, or is that something they're calling themselves as a gang? I feel like the the aspect of like, like oh did does it does Interstellar have anything to do with the Marines is almost like saying, well I guess the title could be lying right. That's not what I said. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> What's going on today? Does Interstellar have anything to do with Marines? That's not what I said. I said what does Interstellar would... refer to? The Marines. No, right. in terms of... A, what does Interstellar, the word Interstellar, refer to? Like, why does someone choose to call themselves an Interstellar thing? Is it because of the fact that they travel interstellarly? Or is it because they like the word for other reasons? Or maybe... And that would be a valid interpretation, by the way. A lie. Like an organization that calls itself something that's not true. Right. There's there a lot there to dig out of that, then. I guess, yeah. That's what I'm saying with the whole, if we dug into these, uh, these stories, maybe there is more of a justification for the name, but I just, uh, I would still then retreat to saying that, um, 
a name is super important for hooking people in, so if you can achieve one that has a hook and has a lot of meaning related to the story once you finished it. Halo, um, for instance. Oh, yeah. And then the short and sweet element is definitely an important part. Short and sweet is, is a, I suppose, yeah. you know, with exceptions. Like, everything, everywhere, all at once is... That's got a... <laughs> It's quite Look a. It in of itself because it is a long name. Well, and the unbearable weight of massive talent, right? That's which is one. such a self-aware title that it makes people want yeah. to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Northman. You, so we are dating this video quite well, aren't we? Remember <laughs> 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 all these films that are coming out right now. The Northman. They'll never be able to guess when this was recorded. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna watch Brown Table's anime rags. Um, no, because it's going to be fucking shit. Wow. Not even giving it a chance. I mean, I mean I'm not going to watch it because I just don't... It, but... I, after the trailer, I was like, yeah, this, this is not going to be one I mean, of them shows I am going to enjoy. Terrible. Uh, Mubly, please read in film reviewer voice. Okay, so... What is film reviewer voice? Well, because it could be multiple things. It could be video essays voice. It could be your, I guess, voice for doing your own videos. Yeah. Um. I'm just gonna read it. Could be like the the critic you remember from um the critic the show. I doubt also, they're referring to that, but that's a that's a fair <laughs> option. Um, Jay Sherman, right? Wasn't that the character's name? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Well, so. I'm just gonna read it out in my voice. Considering what it is, I think they'll get what they want. Um. Okay, so it says, Roar, Nuzzles, how are you? Pounces on you. You're so warm. Notices you have bulge. Someone's happy. Nuzzles your necky wacky. Meh. Eh heh. Rubbies your bulgy wolgy. I, I, I assume wolgy, I don't know. And then it ends with, You're so big. Pretty weird. To send that is in. That, is that is that that's your it's your the voice you're gonna do for that you're gonna commit to, to that with that voice. Um, looks like I am. Uh, I think they'll be disappointed. You know what? That's okay. That's a a weird request, you know. But all right. Bibleman Power Source Episode One: Terminating the Toxic Tonic of Disrespect. This sounds fun and funny. Any good comic quotes? Memes? Any good Speak comic right. quotes? Oh, they're asking I can't meme, think but... Any off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah meme would not. be better. He probably would. I know. do not know. Yeah, I don't know comic quotes. Remember, Bible him. Man would be a good one after after Batwoman. We could do Batwoman and Bible Man. Yeah, I think you you mentioned that Bible Man would be a good one to to check out at some point. So, I, I am on board. That would be pretty. Educational. Because there's all kinds of like different characters, you know, and I'm curious how you want to have a superhero action, like you want to have villains, right? So how do you do the whole? We have to defeat the villains, but we have to do the you know the Christian love thing, and it has to be for kids, right? So how do they? Where, where do they draw the line on how much like fighting and stuff they could do against them, and what is going to be the nature of the villains? Because I assume they have one for all the the like the deadly sins. And they have villains who are just... Yeah, I wonder how far the, they will stray from the specifically Christian part and just go into use, just using regular kinds of... Like, like maybe you have a villain who's just really dirty and he never washes or bathes, right? Which isn't like a super Christian thing, you know? That's just a basic thing you should do. Are they going to be able to take that and try to, you know, wrap it in a sort of Christian messaging for kids? How far are they going to be able to take it, you know? Oh, are they going to fight Satan? Oh, I hope so. It's season finale stuff, isn't it? That is kind of season finale stuff, yeah. Um, It was me, Barry. I made the Snyder Cut. You know, that's one of the things Meme would reference, actually, that quote, yeah. Probably. Um, EFAP into the Bible verse. Into the Bible verse? Which Bible verse? All of them. Oh. There are many verses in the Bible, yeah. Yes, there are. There's like three. Hundred. Let me check. How many verses are in the Bible? Let's see. How many verses are in the Bible? You two know. 31,102. That'll, Neat. of course, 
vary from Bible to Bible, whether it's is that the King, King James, James Bible? or uh, you never know. I don't. Is it the, in what language? I guess. Well, I guess the language yeah. probably wouldn't change it unless there. Because I think uh, like uh, maybe. Because I think that I don't know if there is a like for instance the Latin Vulgate is gonna be. I think all those are gonna be. I don't know. Like, would they make King James and stuff versions in Latin? Because I, because the Dewey Reams would certainly be in Latin. You see, you never, you never know. Like, would, would they bother to translate Protestant Bibles into Latin? I assume someone's done it along the way, but you, you never know. Yeah. Oh, this one says, "Brown table, please don't procreate." Oh. Oh, don't. Calm worry. down. That's uh, something to request, I suppose. Efap into the Bible verse. Oh yeah, that's, that, that, I, I guess I was posted twice. Okay, fair enough. Maybe it'll happen. Um, what's the Snyderoid stream that Southpaw went on and got hung up on for being right? I need it. Snyderoid stream? You no. talking about an EFAP episode, or are you talking about something else? The Snyderoid stream. He maybe he streamed with people who liked uh, Snydega. I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure. I'm afraid I'm unaware of that one. Yeah, no clue. Um, my opinion. The both Justice League movies are bad. The Snyder fanboy. How dare you, you uncultured swine. Well, yeah, they're, they're not only convinced that um, the Snyder Cut is better. They are convinced it's a it's pretty like damn very great film. Good. Yeah. It's because they are delusional. I mean, a little bit, because a lot of what they'd be critical of uh, the Whedon Cut for is in the Snyder Cut. At least that's what I've come to understand. Seems to be the case. They there is more walking. To be that familiar with their own thing. And if you enjoy walking, there's a lot, like there's a lot of that in there. So I wouldn't want to undersell the importance of walking. Get you places. How many Australians have been on EFAP? Um, um not many. Memes Australia. Not right? a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Not a Definitely. whole lot. Maybe we need to expand in that area. But then again, we haven't had many, um... Three, four, five? You know, Mexicans. I think... Yeah. Oh, I don't know if we've had a Mexican. I'm not sure. I don't keep tabs on people, on where people are from. I just don't really... You know, we're all people at the end of the day. True. Um, fuck, marry, kill, Lauren Chen, Lauren Southern, Gina Carano. Gonna... I don't know who Lauren that one. Chen is any way, and I I don't know. Uh, when I when I gave blood, the nurse stabbed through my vein into my bicep. Now I have to trim out the bruise, or I won't meet livestock production standards. Trim out the bruise. Trim out the bruise. So I don't. You just like let the blood out. That's an odd way to say it, to trim out the bruise. Because bruise is just a, basically a bleeding that doesn't break the skin. So, trim out the bruise. May I'll just chalk that up to you wording that oddly. So that he doesn't meet what? Livestock production standards. What's the name? Do you know the name of this person? Maybe they're like playing as a as some sort of chattel. I don't know, but I was wondering maybe if... You're not allowed to work with livestock for food if you've got a bruise, is that the idea? That would make sense because BSI, but I'm not... Yeah, I don't know. I legit don't know. I have no idea, personally. No clue. Uh, this video is a one-off, if not the awful. Oh, sorry. Just weird. Weirdly weird. Uh, no, so I, I don't think this is... It's like, this video is one of, if not the, awful. Like... Okay. It's a bad video. <laughs> I agree. Uh, Joel Whedon parked his car on my sandwich. Sorry parked to hear that. Parked his car on your sandwich. You know, if that's referencing something specific, I have forgotten. Um, maybe it's a matter of combining Joss Whedon, one of the worst human beings in history, and Joel, one of the mass killers of history. Or the the only killer of history, really, um, into Joel Whedon, this horrifying monster that takes people's 
sandwiches. Joel Whedon ate Ali's bigot sandwich. See? There you go. Mm. Wheaton is the new Dinkelberg. Well Dinkelberg. Yeah, he was a he was a scapegoat for like a lot of any of the issues that could have been found in the uh, in the Wheaton cut. I just um there's some in there that I'm just curious if they would have been kept uh, without the reaction people would have given for the you know like it, how would how would his cut look uh, Zack Snyder without any of the benefits well, I guess in the, the app one is Cal L no the the either the um, dub ADR or just a different take spliced with the exact same actual take yeah you um, know like yeah there's clearly little little changes in there that very likely I think it's Right. It's basically impossible after the film has come out, you've seen the response to it to not, to some extent, you yeah. know, make... I guess that's the thing, though. It's not the original, because there was a lot of stuff that wasn't in the original, and repurposed shots and stuff that was reshot later on that wasn't uh, there. So, like, whatever it is, it wasn't as it was originally intended. It is something uh, of its own. Because there was never going to be a four-hour cut of that film, theatrical. Like, th that was never going to happen. What? I mean, yeah, it, as it turns out, not a lot of four-hour films tend to get released. Which is interesting because of all the movies that probably should maybe be made with that kind of length in mind, if you're going to make a Justice League movie where you introduce, like, half of the Justice League in that movie... Yeah. You should, you maybe four hours, if it's really well used, would go a long yeah. way. No wasted time of people walking up, you know, stairs. Like yeah, we are. you have got shit to do. A lot of work to do. What a bad way to, like, do a Justice League movie, introduce, like, half the cast in that film. Especially in, like, a post-Avengers world, you know? Yeah, when the template's there. Not even the MCU can benefit from having a template. Uh, I don't even know if they have a template. I don't know if they have one anymore. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm suggesting that they're the ones that created it, therefore they must be aware of it, as opposed to DC, who, I guess, just don't want to copy Marvel, but clearly do. Wow. Well, I guess we all would, noticed it. I guess we'll see Will probably going forward. I guess you can give that to Zack Snyder. He's not copying the same formula. Yeah. He's going with his own. Yeah, maybe it, it was all maybe an attempt to still try and... I don't know, maybe the dominance of the MCU hadn't quite caught on to some people at that point, and so they still thought, no, we could totally do our own thing that isn't like well, that at all. Which maybe it was, they... um, yeah. I think there was that sentiment at the time when Batman v Superman came out. I certainly thought it was going to make more money than Civil War. I think a lot of people did. It's Batman Superman, right? And then it didn't. It was like, oh, also, huh? That that was a that was a good use of well, as we had discussed earlier. Because ah, you said yes. well, and then I was like, oh, he's going to say something. What is he going to say? Let let us yeah. see. I can just nitpick. It was a little loud. That's all. Was it a little loud? I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Oh, I do oh, think wow. so. That's going to have to be our difference. <laughs> oh, well, definitely wrong. It was it was a very well-lauded well. Thank you, Rags. I appreciate that. It was fine. Don't jump. listen to him. He's trying to trying to drag you down into this world of soft, quiet wells. Don't let him do it. I can't hear you. You're too quiet. Turn me up. Why would I do that? So you can hear me. So you can hear mm. all of my... You could... All of these pearls... Of wisdom. Bloop, bloop. And that's the sound they make as they drop from my mouth. Bloop, bloop. These pearls of wisdom. There's your Bible reference. The next one says, Booyah, my N words. Nice. That's what I often say when I travel to the hood. Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers said everyone was great. I assume that's referring to the actors in the Snyder Cut, in which case I'm sure oh, today he would agree uh, that that is a mistake because pretty much everybody agrees Gal Gadot sucks now. Has yes. that become like a popular opinion now, yeah. or at least the accepted opinion? Yep. Yeah, Death on the is Nile. Is it because thing. of Death on the around. Nile? I think, I think it was it's before because that. Of a lot of things. Yeah, I think uh, I think Wonder Woman eighty four definitely because there are a lot of like really bad deliveries in that film. 
I need yeah. you to give me this stone. Like, I remember that <laughs> one. It's just, it's, it, that was basically what it sounded like. It was just awful. Um, yeah, I think the sentiment has gotten around at this point. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. I think it's because Wonder Woman had a good rep. Uh, like, Wonder Woman, the first film, just Maybe. had a good reputation. And I think yeah, it, I think it, it might have just... Because if the film's good, how could it be that the lead wasn't good? But it almost feels like a lot yeah. of Chris Pine's charisma, you know, like his charisma kind of seeped over. Yeah. Because boy, you see, you put those two in the same room and it is a stark contrast, shall we say. Well, I he would is agree, working but... hard and she is I would... either working, calling her working hard is... I'm sure oh, she worked. Sure, I just don't think yeah, she's good at acting, that's all. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, yeah, I knew there is the their chemistry is what Cytus was good about that film. Uh, and that's what I'm saying. I almost feel like it's just him gets broadly expanded into chemistry, right? But yeah. when it's really it's just him doing it's a lot of heavy lifting. Sided affair. Ve yeah. <laughs> Hey, you know Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, he said everyone was stupid. I think the point this Super Chat is making, but you can't know for sure. You can't trust Super Chat about what someone else said. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe Some Jeremy did say everyone was stupid. Lie you know on the internet? It's a fair thing. I mean, he might have a way of justifying that. Everyone was stupid. It's a lot of movies, unfortunately. Um... Hey, I had to struggle. When I was younger and when my dad passed away, my family was hard on money, but Cyborg is still crap in Snyder Cut and that and ruined that family's life. Oh, they're talking about the whole giving people free oh, money. Oh, the money, thing. yeah. <laughs> that was just not thought through at all. Not Dude, a lot such of a fucking there. breath of fresh air when I think it was YMS's review. He was like the only other bigger reviewer that I noticed brought that up. He was like, wait, that's not how money works. Wait, oh, specifically giving someone money or the problems associated with what the film is maybe trying to say he should do with the money? Oh, I, I think, it's I like think, a uh, multi-pronged problem. Well, yeah, I think YMS's criticism is just, in the real world, this doesn't happen. This can't happen. No, he was, you know? he's talking it's the same as us, the, the IRS issues. You can't just drain money well, into no, a that, bank and hope nobody cares. Yeah, that's you'd have meant. to, you have to like, deliver a doesn't. bag of money to them. Yeah, and there were way well, smarter just, ways to get well, money to people, like, than that. Just hacking into an ATM and just delivering that money into someone's yeah, bank account. I'm sure they'll be no so problem. So they'll just yeah, be flagged like by the bank as like, what the fuck is this? Why is this happening? And they'll just be like, well, yeah. it's a glitch. And they'll be like, right, so get the money back. <laughs> well, you know what? A little to... computer glitch, you deserve all that money. I mean, we, we talked briefly about anime. And we, while we do not consume the media often, I don't think, uh, I certainly don't, I do recall in the, this is going to be a very, I want y'all to mark this down in your calendars and write in your dear diaries about this one. I'm going to reference a manga that I have read. Um, it was the uh, Full Metal Alchemist uh, comic, and there was a plot that relied on the... Who Edward is the still human one. Uh, Edward, he, in order to try and like get one over a, a a a guy who ran a town and he was kind of an asshole about it and he was being mean to the townsfolk. He had may he turned a bunch of metals into gold with transmutation, and then he undid it later to fool the guy. And a big plot point around that was, well, we're not supposed to turn metals into gold with, uh, you know, alchemy. That's, you know, th that's obviously bad. We can't do that. So even even that anime was like, yep, you can't, you know, if you fuck around with money, there are rules and there are consequences to doing that that must be accounted for in the material. I thought he was a creep. He was Table Baggins. All right. It's not even a Mungo reference. Despite being only 13% of the population, and I don't know what that's going to relate to from the video we were covering, but that's all it says. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure even statistically what is important about 13% of a population. Um, 
If Snyder Derangement Syndrome persists for greater than 24 hours, seek your nearest objective medical care center for assistance. Snyder Derangement Syndrome? I mean, they would we accuse us of having have, that. Yeah, we presumably. don't have that. We just think he's really bad at making movies. Yeah, nobody accuses us have... of having fucking Ryan Johnson Derangement Syndrome. Yeah, we have a lot of references <laughs> to Zack Snyder's really Ryan Johnson movies, Derangement but... Syndrome, yeah. I don't know. I bet when we first started, uh, there were people unironically saying they had that. Maybe, but I mean, it'd just be, you've got the opposite. You've got Snyder Apologia Syndrome. Yeah, yeah. you have RAS. I'm using the insult Turbo Cunt from now on, Mola. That was fantastic from your Rise of Palpatine rant. Um, nice and simple, Rise isn't it? Rise of Palpatine. I mean, that should be what the name of the film is, it to is, be honest. Yeah. We'd even have multiple layers to it. Yep. Somehow, Palpatine Rose. Just found I'm 2% Welsh, Pog. I'm basically your mum now. Oh. Oh, nice. Sweet. Check out Final Fantasy XV's OST sometime. It's great rat, also high racks. Hello. I agree. It's, it's there's, there's some tracks I've listened to in it that are really cool. Hmm. Which one was 15? Uh, that was the most recent one. It was, uh, the one where they drive around in cars and stuff. That's basically oh. all I call it. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they drive around in the car. I don't know anything about that game. Oh, well, I think the most recent one was actually the remake, but, like, the most recent... Like, you know, new one, yeah. Game. So I guess 16 is up next. Who knows what 16 yeah. has in store for us? Oh, I think there's a trailer for it. Uh, but I don't know when it's coming out, though. Um, I work on a mezzanine maintaining box making machines, and y'all keep me same every day. Love you, Mola Rags, and whoever is starring here. By the way, Jay's like an Australian metabot from Poke Poke Capen. Poke okay. Capen crew. Sorry, it's Shadow works in a box factory. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, of course, I'm thinking about the Simpsons right now. Someone's no, gotta make boxes. Make boxes here. Well, I mean, yeah, that's that's what the box factory guy was. You know, it's just like yeah, someone's gotta make them. You take them for granted. All those boxes lying around. You put stuff in them all the time. You throw them away. You fold them up and you well, don't give them any second I mean, People rarely reuse them, but they can be reused as well. Absolutely. I know I do. A good box is very useful. I used one today. I used a box today. It was very helpful. I, you know I'm what? I'm inclined to agree. You know how we, would, we had that question about chairs and, uh, no, it was wheels and doors. Wheels and doors. It was like, um, ah, oh, damn it. We talked, well, we talked about this, yes, like, or whatever day <laughs> related to the EFAP that it was. It'll stop saying feels like. Um, I'm sure that. I wonder how like often someone comes in, you know, within the purview of a box in any given day. At least once a day, right? Generally, um, probably. Lots of things box. Box. To be a sophisticated box. A cereal you know? box. Cereal box. The computers housed in a yeah. box. Just food box. Just, just. I mean, don't even stop with food. Just food in general how much food is in a box and you take you it out of the box that a phone is a, is a type of box and that it contains things within it I th we I might be straining the definition of a box I, at that point but I, I think with phone yeah um but boxes are just they're all over the place you see a box you don't think anything of it but boy are they useful it's good to have a couple boxes around to put your trash in before you take it out or Man, I don't know. Made over 2,000 on Doge. My big brain found whiskey vastly improves the Snyder Cut. Invest in Ragscoin. Ragscoin is good. Ragscoin, it keeps its value. I didn't realize. Does it keep its value, or is that something No, I lied. It goes up in value. Yes, but what are your interests in Ragscoin that you need to disclose before giving this kind of advice? My interest in Ragscoin? Yeah, I... like, do you have, do you own any? Me? Yeah. All right, well, I'm I'm rags. <laughs> I own all the rags coin. Well, I'm just saying that that is a conflict. That might be a conflict of interest that is uh, worth disclosing. Uh, you have I... now, so you know. 
Oh yeah. Just keep that um, in mind. Yeah, but well, um, I have no conflict of interest. It is actually a. I mean, it, that, it is all of our interests. You can say that if you up. want. You can say that if you want, but I, I don't know that it's that simple. Hey, look, I don't have conflict. a conflict of interest. Our I interest, said so. No, yeah, no conflict. Our interests align beautifully. I mean, you can say that. The truth is beautiful, is what I once heard from a 20th, 20th century philosopher. <laughs> philosopher. Mm. All philosopher. Philosopher. That's a female, a philosopher. Female philosopher. No, there is no distinction. They're all equivalent. Wow. 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 Bringy denying the identities of women. You heard it here on EFAP. I'm, I am I, his opinions are the not identities of women. Of Oh my there goodness. Is, there gracious. is no distinction to be drawn between a male or a female philosopher. Yeah, it's like, to be it's like you're trying to segregate um, them, Rags. Right? They're saying they, they, they yeah, can't no, be philosophers, Jesus. they have to be philosopheresses. They are categorically not philosophers in Rags' mind. They're another category, whereas I just value equally. If you want to you hitch feminist. your horse to the wagon. Yeah, if you want to hitch your horse to the, the segregationist philosophy wagon, then that's Of that's course, your because women are beautiful and wonderful, and we should I never have said otherwise. separate spaces for philosopheresses. I have enough their, faith in women that they can exist in the same spaces as male philosophers. Uh, but that you is, don't oh, agree. Oh, denying women Look, their I can see that you're... I, there is no denial of any space. I am merely yes, saying that there is no... No, I'm not. You're stealing their... T you're, t you're taking their title away from them. How awful I haven't is taken that? any title away from them. You definitely have done that. They are philosophers. I'm going to have to That's... agree with Rags. You have taken Rags' title for them away, which yeah. was probably a good one. I don't move. see how I have. That's theirs. That's theirs. It's not even mine. I would never want to claim ownership over a title of. I women. have not claimed ownership over any title. I don't think. Yeah, because you don't think it exists. <laughs> I don't think it does. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna find philosopheress in a dictionary, but. Philosopheress is definitely in the dictionary. It's in all the the dictionaries. If it's all not the good a dictionary, ones, yeah. you should burn that dictionary. Oh my god! Rags advocates for book burning. Yeah. What is hey. this? Nineteen, Germany, four. Listen, it's a tough role play, all right. The mask slips. Kind of, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think whiskey, even whiskey, is powerful enough to make the Snyder Cut any it's better. It's so I'm long. Sorry. It's so long. I don't know whiskey, how it would help. I mean, in the same way that I guess being intoxicated would make anything potentially more bearable. What if it made it less bearable? I don't, it might, but generally that's not what happens, right? A lot of the time when you're drunk, you tend to maybe enjoy things more than you would have otherwise. Or well, maybe your inhibitions for tolerance go down. So, like, if there's nothing much happening, then maybe your brain can latch on to the little things and just enjoy Or if not them. a lot is happening, you get bored faster. I don't know. I, th uh, that might be, that. that's certainly possible, but I think for most people it's normally that they're able to find things like funnier and more entertaining that they wouldn't have otherwise hope you're one of those people and if you're gonna watch the Snyder Cut and you have access to whiskey I think I am both of those things oh you're in luck I didn't well know. not really because you're not gonna watch the Snyder Cut again hopefully absolutely not I don't know what it would take for me to watch that again I legit don't know I would avoid any scenario that would require me to launch it again. What what is the what's the minimum amount of money that people would have to give you to watch that again? I don't we can know. start we can start at we can start at a hundred. Would you watch it again for a hundred? Because I would. I would watch the Snyder Cut again for a hundred dollars. Oh twenty-five dollars an hour? It's good. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh what about you, Mahler? Would you watch the Snyder Cut for one hundred dollars? So, or I guess your poundage equivalent, or sheep, or whatever you use as currency in Wales. I just, uh, I just, I just, I just really don't want to watch that thing again. I don't, but a hundred bucks. I don't either, but a hundred bucks, man. Is it required that we stare at the screen? I mean, you could, like, I, you... I feel you like might, in the spirit have, of the question, you know? Yeah, like, not stare, but, like, if you have to pee, like, you can get a pee real quick and come back, you know, that sort you of thing. You are paying attention. Yeah, you have to paying attention, you know. So you can't go on Twitter while it's playing? No. 
I don't uh, think that's only if you post question. how very quickly how much you really enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, you're only allowed to say only only thing, thing you're allowed to tweet while watching it. And you're not allowed to reply to other people's tweets in response. Oh no, it's because it's right back to the movie. Yeah. Uh, maybe. <laughs> well, a hundred bucks, you know. Yeah, I, I know. I, I just ugh. No, I gotcha. Um. I would okay, Fringy. Let, let's let's slap that in half. Fifty bucks. Would you watch it for nah, fifty bucks? Nah. Nah, no. I think a hunt would be the That was a very I'd quick no, too. You didn't really have to think about that one. Yeah, 50 bucks ain't worth it. No. I do... I do not... Yeah, I don't think so either. I feel like I if I was... I think about an hour, you know? In Australia, that's below minimum wage. Like, yeah, no thanks. Uh, I think if it was 50 bucks, because I'm... For four hours... I'd watch a lot of movies for 50 bucks, but not a four hour movie. No, I yeah, could like, put four hours to making like dog bite stuff and get more than 50 bucks back probably. Mm -hmm. Cause a part of me wants to say, well, you could, you know, cause it, equate it to the sense of like a meal, right? Could you go out with some people for 50 bucks and have a really nice dinner? It's like, well, uh, not a, like a nice dinner, but a, a good one, probably at a little. It's more of if an experience. Two of you, you, could get a, you could get a nice meal, but um, I don't know if you'd be getting that much if it was like or, three or four people. Yeah. Yeah, it would be because I'm thinking like I could take my like my parents out to lunch for fifty bucks, easy, no problem at all. We have a nice lunch, all of us for fifty bucks. But it would have taken me four hours of watching Snyder Cut to have a a solid one hour, one and a half hour kind of experience if we really dragged it out. So. That is not a good exchange rate. And then hopefully yeah. they wouldn't ask, where'd you get the money to take us to lunch? And then I'd, I, then I'd have to, oof. You wouldn't want to explain the shame. I watched the Snyder Oh, maybe that would lead them to them loving me more. It's like, I watched the Snyder Cut for you. They're like, oh, he really wow, does how, love how me. Nice. That's yeah. true love. That right there, that's true love. That's a good point, Ryan, actually, yeah. Hmm. I would not do it for $50. No. <laughs> no way. Hello there, Mooby and Wagsy. Did you finish Hotline Miami 1 and 2? What are you and Mooby's thoughts on the story? Also, Ghost in the Shell EFAP movies? I did not play, or finish actually, um, Hotline Miami 1 or 2. I've not played those. Have you not I, played one? About, huh? You played the first Have one? Have you not played one? I played, no. well, the second one got banned here, uh, but I did play the first one. Oh, damn. Really? That's. Yeah. Tyranny. That's Tyranny. Journey. Yeah, cool. yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I completed the first one. I played the second one. I don't think I beat it. I, I like those games. Soundtrack's cool. Yeah, soundtrack's awesome. And uh, yeah. as far as Ghost in the Shell goes, the the Scarlett Johansson one, I assumed. I watched it and I liked it. I thought it was a neat little movie. You are uh, you're in a small camp there, I think, from what I understand. Yeah. I actually, I, I went to. Uh, I'm assuming it's not as good as the original, even from your POV. I haven't the the original. I've seen the original, the anime, um, and they're just different. They're just different. I think because I've only seen it once. I've I've only seen the remake once. I almost want to. Uh, it's it takes a lot. It, it certainly takes visuals and stuff from you know the anime, but I have to. I would have to rewatch it again before I was super definitive. I remember liking it, and I and I remember thinking that for introducing Ghost in the Shell as an IP to general audiences in theaters, I think it did a pretty decent job at sort of getting the point across. Um, but I think if you put, I can understand why they made it the way that they made it. Um, I think Scarlett Johansson was a pretty good Motoko Kusanagi, as far as I'm aware, but. A lot of this is based off of memory, and you know I'm not, I'm not like super hard tied into any of these positions. But I, I thought it was decent for what it was. Um, but of course, I I don't know if that's correct or not. That's just how that is that is how I felt when I saw it. I don't think it's bad though. I'm more confident in saying it's not bad. But that was a long a long time ago. So who knows? Maybe it is terrible. And for whatever reason, it just tickled my fancy enough for me to not have any bad memories or something of it. Rags, what sex act would you do with George R. R. Martin? Oh, if I had to do one, because he's, 
talented as he may be, he's not a he's not a looker, you know. Um, so I would I would want to avoid getting too physical with him. Like what sex act? Like I don't know. I I guess like we have to start really low. Like I'd jerk him off if I, that would count. You know, that's pretty. That's relatively impersonal for being in that kind of a scenario. So yeah, I do that. I don't want to put my like mouth on him anywhere. Faith is not mere belief without evidence. That's just dumb. Not that a lot of people don't present it like that, but it's more like trusting a person when they tell you something you can't verify. Can you? Uh, that is definitely uh, not a way that it is used really at all. Um, I don't understand that much of a difference between the way that they've separated those two things. Yeah, they both are on the basis of like no evidence. Like, if Fringy tells me, "Fucking the Northman is one of the worst movies he's ever seen," and then I. I, I'm like, yeah, I believe you. And you're like, you have faith in Fringy that he's telling the truth? I'd be like, yeah. yeah I guess, right? I'd oh, be I like, well, what's your evidence? You haven't seen The Northman. I should be like, well, because I believe him. Well, I I think that, I, I think you should. I don't think that's faith. Because I think that you, knowing Fringy for as long as you have, like, if you both told me, no, to, we saw I don't want to let you go too long without, so I did, I'm saying that what they've defined it as a difference doesn't make sense to me because it sounds like the same thing. Not what I've defined as faith or belief. They, they've so said you would... that um, belief is, is faith isn't belief without evidence. It's trusting a person when they tell you something that you, they, you can't verify. So belief without evidence seems like um, they haven't made a distinction. I I think the distinction lies in you can have there there is a I guess I think there's the difference between not being able to verify something in the end and not having any evidence at all. Like, you can have evidence for something that isn't particularly good, but you're unable to verify it. If that makes sense? Um, so the for evidence instance, if you, if you were to tell me that uh, you, uh, you got a next-door neighbor and they have a German Shepherd, right? Then... It, it, but but they, they they moved away and you didn't have any pictures of it. That's just what your neighbors you know had. Then I have no way to verify that. But we have built up a a level of trust between us, and I have a pretty high level of confidence in things that you say to where I could believe you, but I could not verify that. But I would not call that faith because of that level of confidence that our continued relationship has given me. So That's again, my... I'm, I'm not really talking about what I think. It's just so they said belief without evidence couldn't be because you you've just said the like are you suggesting that you can't verify the evidence, but the evidence is me having said that that was a thing that happened that they had that yeah, dog I would in that say place. That's low, I, yeah, I'd say that's a, a form of evidence, not a great one. Well, so, but... yeah, because well, couldn't I just say like I've spoken to God or whatever? You could. You can't verify that, but I can but say it. That's true, but those are on different levels of a claim, and I think that the evidence would apply, you know, in terms of, like, the, the quality of the evidence would apply differently to both. Uh, how would you define the difference? Be okay, so if you were, so let's say it's, it's a claim either way. You are telling me based on just our relationship and our confidence in one another and our continued ability to at least transmit to one another what we believe to be the truth right one of those claims is very mundane and the other one is like a supernatural you know very very extraordinary claim right so even though both of them are things that you are saying in even if you believe both of them to be true one of them applies to an event that is extraordinary and the other applies to an event that is extremely mundane which is someone having a dog near you I'm surely extraordinary is going to be in the eye of the beholder right because if someone says like I speak to Somewhat? God every day and they wouldn't even describe that as supernatural yeah, they wouldn't, but I don't. Uh, but I think we could certainly come to general agreements on what is extraordinary things, and there's going to be some level of subjectivity in that. But I think there are very, very much general. Well, you levels and I would what... label it that way. But if in this, because it seems like the person who's saying this is being defensive on the part of faith, I assume this person is likely religious and thus. I would. I think most people would regard a god claim as an extraordinary thing. 
Um, I'm not sure because I've always I've Can heard we... when they get they get defensive over calling it extraordinary or supernatural for the sake of this is the norm. Well, here's the thing, in all of the apologetics that I've seen, generally it is only contested that that is an extraordinary thing when specifically the Carl Sagan quote is brought up. The quote being extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. That is the only time I have ever seen Christian apologists, or really Christians in general, ever contest that, like, speaking with a god or the existence of god as being non-extraordinary. Um... I don't know, actually. I'm not sure. Well, uh, at the same time, how would you define faith? For the sake of that being a potential I, subject. Faith is, uh, faith is an excuse people give when they have no evidence for something that they believe to be true. So when I say I have faith in something, you would say I just have nothing else to say. I if you if you were to say it, I would assume so are we talking about like in general usage? So I can think of a, a just... time I would use it, right? Is if um I don't know, Fringy said there's no way I'm gonna I'm gonna let like this person suffer in this particular environment, but be it like maybe he's a manager in some factory. And he's like, my workers, uh, they deserve blah, 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 blah. And someone goes, do you think Fringy's going to be able to pull it off? Like balancing uh, maybe monetary related things with their, their well-being? And I'd be like, yeah, I have faith in him. Yeah, I, I think I, I would understand what you mean. I think that's just that I think that's just the difference between a more colloquial usage of faith and the religious use of faith. So if we were having, like, if we were in a religious debate and someone was talking about faith in a religious sense, that would be different than someone just, like, using it in the way that you use it. Uh, you were using it right there with the Fringy example. Um, but if someone was to try and use faith in the sense of, well, you have faith too, I would say, no, I, I do not, I don't think I have faith in anything, right? I have justifiable levels of confidence in everything that I have that is proportional to their impact on my life, right? Thus the dog example. Well, yeah, because um, I was going to say, like, if it's if someone suggested then, like, oh, so you believe in Fringy without evidence? I'd be like, no, 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 because that's not quite how I would define it either. I was more curious about the person yeah, yeah, the, in this super chat, because I would say, like, I have faith in Fringy because of his values and actions. I would say that, because, and I would say to that, then I think that categorically means it isn't faith. I think you just you have justified confidence in Fringy. You don't have faith in him because... Well, yeah, because, no like, if I... Because it could be like, oh, I had a neighbor who had a cat. And it's like, oh, okay. And then it's like, I had a neighbor who had a horse. It's like, ah. Or I had a neighbor who had a, a an ocelot. It's like, okay. Yeah. Like, you know. That's, that's the I example that, that I... That's the, that's the example that generally I will use when I talk about, cor you know, correlating some level of... Like, like if, if, some, if my next door neighbor says I have a pet dog, I will just take them at their word, right? If it turns yeah. out I'm wrong to have given them that, that faith, essentially that warrantless trust, essentially warrantless trust, then it has no impact on my life whatsoever. But if they yeah. came up to me and said, I have a pet dragon, then I would not take them for at their word because that goes against everything I understand about the world. Before I clarified what um, would have given me faith in Fringy, what did you think I had meant then? Because you said that wouldn't be faith, that would be confidence. Yeah, just the, uh, but what you had said, what. When I, when I said that I, you know, like, if Fring in a, was in a tough scenario to get things right for his workers in his factory, and I say I have faith that he's going to be able to do it, um, what did you think I meant when I said that? Because you ended up saying it wouldn't be faith when I clarified that it would be a matter of me basing it on what I know about him. I, I, I think that's, I guess that's just a disconnect between what we're both using as that word. Um, no, because you said that's a good colloquial you... use of it, and you know what I mean. So I was curious what you thought I meant. In that situation, I, I, I would know what I, I did know what you mean. That's why I say in that it is a difference that needs to be uh, explained in the, the, the kind of in the scenario that we're using the word faith. Because um, if you came up to me and you said that, I think I would know what you mean. But in a, if we were using faith in the context of like a religious discussion, then you yeah, know you said I that, would, you, you know, you, but you said like it would be a valid use colloquially. Which is kind of what I find interesting about this is that those are, those two uses are uh, yeah active. it would but then yeah, you said I, that I, um, wish... I shouldn't use it that way because what it means because I'm not sure I understand the difference between having faith in a person and then knowing their traits and thus believing they would make what you believe to be the right choice because one of because that because that latter one is built off of a 
level of confidence that is built up from an actual experience that you have evidence for. You'd say the right? requirement for faith is that I wouldn't have evidence. Yes. That would be back to square one then. Because, um... The square one being... I'm not sure... Where would I be using I have faith in a person if it, if not being referenced to something I knew about them? Is it just faith in humanity? So, faith is generally often used in a colloquial sense to just mean a high level of trust. But when people use that in a religious sense, I think that's built off of a very incorrect understanding of the world around them. Um, yeah, we're, we're ignoring the religious one for now. I'm also curious because... Uh, well, so if we ignore the religious element, there are still times where you consider it valid to say you have faith in someone, right? Valid meaning if you say it, I know what you are referring to? Valid in the sense that you wouldn't have any reason to correct the statement in terms of accurate words. Um... Or is there not? I would say that I... It's not enough of a deal to me to get into it, honestly. Um, it, it wouldn't be worth... It just wouldn't be worth it, and I know what you mean, but... I, I, guess, I guess if I was really pressed into a super duper stringent anal sort of definition, I, I do kind of wish that people didn't call general trust in things faith because in religious discussions, faith is very is a very big part of what people use for religious beliefs. And when it is used in colloquial terms to just mean a high level of trust, I think that really kind of muddies uh, the, the theological implications of it. But There's a lot of words to do that, right? Stint, having um, different meanings depending on context to be specifically specifically faith and its importance to religious discussions i think kind of gives it sure but um, like we're talking about a word that's been ingrained for a really long time like i've always heard people use just representative of their trust in somebody to be a form of faith uh yeah i yeah, think I that's think... A, a shame that that's the case that that I, word's I kind so. of caught on like that I, I i've always understood if someone says like my faith and in general, I already like that tweaks me onto like, oh, it's religious. They mean, like, yeah. I, I think the context of the words will always give away. Like, if I said I have, you know, I, I have faith in Fringy, I'd be surprised if anyone's like the religion of Fringy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, people use that word in a way that when people use that word, oftentimes in a theological way, I think they are using it in a colloquial sense, and um, uh, they are applying that to discussions of the supernatural and they are using it as a level of either an excuse which is how i hear it pretty much used all the time when people if people have evidence for something they will give the evidence of the thing they won't say you know you take it on faith or that's just my faith well know? like is in it's almost a bit of a cop out once the arguments have been exhausted i mean that yeah that's why that's that's how i've heard it so much that that's essentially my go-to definition of when it's used in this context because that's how i always hear it used because um the way i understand it is that is formal uh a, a formal use of faith it's just the religion also has its definition like they're both very valid known definitions and i can't see myself using faith that often but one i could definitely see it and i think it's suitable is if uh someone told me the scenario is fringy sitting down and an old old lady drops her purse in such a sense that he knows he could get away with stealing it. Um, and he just, you know, it's like, what do you think he would do? I'd be like, I mean, I'd hope he wouldn't steal it. I'd, I I have faith that he wouldn't. But the thing is in my head, I'm like, I guess there's a chance he would. I wouldn't say I know he wouldn't. Um, and and the, the sort of, it would start to switch gears in my head to saying, yeah, I, I do have faith in him uh, as a person, this sort of thing. And it, just, it feels suitable to me. I, I don't think I've... I'm already convinced that like it's doing damage to any kind of conversation, especially with how weird the English language is with a lot of these words, though I happily draw the line with you on, on literally, because it's a, a matter of it meaning the opposite yeah. of what it means, which is just making it useless. It's it's everything and nothing. So the super chat question, I guess, is... It's not really a question, it's more so they're, it, they're arguing that um, faith should be considered uh, a, a word to be used when you're trusting a person, when they tell you something that you cannot verify, rather than simply belief without evidence. Um, they're not really a question, I mean, they that, just, that's what they, they would 
prefer it be defined as, that's all. It's going to depend on the context, I think. Sort of. I know I, I try to not use that word. Like, well, yeah, a lot of time um, Faith gets prompted specifically when you're you're out of evidence. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's how I I hear it so much. That's like that's to the point where that's just how I define it. That's how I that's the most that I ever see it used. Um, but yeah, I I know I certainly avoid using that word in it. You know, to be you know, anal to how I see it. Like I hope people don't have faith in me. I hope that I've inspired people with confidence in my behavior that they can make reasonable assumptions based off of you know the evidence that I've given them of who you know who I am as a person. Um, I don't know that having confidence in someone means you couldn't have faith in them, or vice versa. I don't know why there was couldn't. Co confidence exist. is certainly on a. It, it's certainly like it's confidence is a spectrum. Like I'm, I'm confident in the random person that they won't, you know, be a serial killer. But in yeah, it, it depends on what it is and how well you know them. Uh, certainly. Okay. But, to clarify, if I, if you know, someone said that rags in that situation with the the granny's purse, and I said. I have faith he wouldn't he wouldn't steal it. I would be surprised if I found out you said, "Damn, I would have thought you knew me better." I'd be like, well, "Yeah, that's my I, point, that's, though." Well, that's because I think I, I you're because I'm aware of how you're probably using the word. Okay. Which is just a matter of terminology, not actually any like thought process. Fair enough. Um, can we blame Canada's problems on their black PM? What? Oh, because of the blackface. Oh, right. Sure, why not? Yeah. Well, I mean, he's sure not exactly popular be... right now, as far as I'm aware. I no. think so. Hi, Raggles. Hi, Moodle. Hi, Mewtree. Hi, Froggo. Oh, hi. Oh, this is Freak You Southpaw. Love You Meme. Rap. Us, us. Well, I mean, Meme would appreciate that, I guess. Um, yeah, I suppose so. Question. You're starting the DCEU over. Which solo hero from DC Comics do you start with? Superman, probably. Either Superman or Batman. Hmm. I suppose you could have I all the answers. It just depends on what your goals are, right? So I think start. You want? I think you want to start off with a big one and end with a big one. So you either start off with Batman or Superman, and then the last solo movie before you do the ensemble is the other, is the other big one. That's a that's a thought actually. I'm gonna so go he, against the grain and say that I think yeah. I'd rather start out with as street level as possible and establish basically Sorry, the man. world very limited. Uh, if not, we okay. only ever find out about the streets this person is on as opposed to anything else. Get everything controlled and small, and then we'll slowly build out the edges as we go. So, so that uh, could, so that could apply to Batman. I guess it depends if you had a. Did you have a particular superhero in mind? I was thinking for that? someone. Um, because it's got to be someone who matches this, but so someone who's maybe even partially homeless, who isn't super powered, doesn't have tech, and believes, you know, so we can focus on just strict character, it's got nothing to do with, like, well, it, it, they would have an interesting history, theoretically, but we're talking, like, potentially living on the streets, as well as dealing with crime on it, because at least with, with Batman, you have, you're gonna, you're gonna get the slices of upper crust of, of that city, right? Um... As well uh, as potentially. His... I mean, I, I I guess you could adapt Batman without oh, doing I mean, the Bruce Wayne stuff. Might have been an idea to start with one of the Robins in that case. Um, like an origin story for uh for like Dick Grayson or Tim Drake or um. Well, Jason they would be Todd. meeting Batman, right? Or you say meet them, make them meet Batman. Well, I'm later. saying if you meet, have like them the meet end Batman, of the movie might be him. The end of the movie, and then the next movie's Batman, so it's like, all right, now we're working up a little bit more, like we're expanding you have... slowly. Yeah, you have the movie about him, like, idolizing Batman, and, like, you could establish Batman does indeed exist in the world. People know it. People know he exists, which is very useful for world building. That's a, certainly a huge problem the MCU's having now is, are, is the world I... aware of these heroes? Are these heroes aware of each other or the events? You don't have to decide ahead of time how many are established and stick to it, right? Uh, Probably, yeah, you will. I, or you're, uh, you're going to have to be very smart with how you introduce people, and if you do, there has to be a reason for why they're being introduced. They couldn't have been there. You have to avoid that they were there all along kind of thing. Well, I think... Uh, what, Unless they were specifically they trying to remain hidden. Like, if you had Superman be introduced at the end of the first phase, that could be the escalation in terms of this is significant for Earth. That yeah, it would get it's like a cosmic issue now. 
yeah, it's like there's more of a willingness, and maybe like the existence of Superman would be something that would bring Wonder Woman out more actively, or the Amazons in general, and the Atlanteans, because it just it just raises the stakes for the planet. And then, if you um, have them, just they all get introduced relatively within like a year or something from all these different places for all different coincidental reasons. It's just like I think that just starts to make the world feel a little less uh, believable. Well, as long as we find reasons for them to arise, and if Superman is the catalyst, that could be a good one. Like Superman's been there obviously for a long time, but he's only made himself like known in his movie because circumstances have brought that uh, forth. Because, like, you know Atlantis, okay. that, that one is, is one where I'm just like, oh, we have to be careful with how we can make it so that they haven't been found all this by time. By just normal humans, not even by the other yeah. superheroes, but just by normal humans. And, exactly. Yeah, and, and that means they need to, like, not interact with the surface in their entire history. Yeah, they need to be uh, I specifically... Because I, yeah. I can believe cool. it if the Atlanteans are trying to avoid detection through some technology or trickery, you know? Or, or, or if you... I think. I think that's what we yeah. can do. Yeah. Atlantis exists in this world, but then nobody actually really believes that it exists. That'd yeah, cool we didn't find to... them because we they, they have magic or technology, something that keeps them hidden, and they want that to be the case. Your cool um, way to start your uh, your franchise is it's hidden in like a Indiana Jones type, you know, Uncharted type type thing where it's just a, an explorer, and maybe he dies at the end of that movie, but he discovers Atlantis and introduces it to the world, and that's what kicks off your MCU. Well, and yeah, maybe that's... Uh... Hmm. Well, because it could be Aquaman, right? Because he lives on the surface, so it could just if be you want he, him to. If, he, if he's invest. Well, that's true. We don't have to. Oh, yeah, I was mainly appealing to just the idea of like a bait and switch of a franchise. Like you watch yeah. an Indiana Jones movie level, and then it just opens up into a completely different thing. But um, then again, maybe people wouldn't like that, especially if you did it well, and they were like, "I like this guy, and I like this genre. Why am I now dealing with this?" A superhero thing, yeah. You got options. That's the important lots part and here. Lots and yeah. lots of options. Um, I'm a religious man, but all this mention of faith is annoying. That's the, now I remember the video because they made a point that the Snyder Cut is all about faith. Oh yes, I remember this one now. Yeah. Um, and they even used the clip where Alfred's like, "Bruce, how do you know that any of this is going to work?" And he's like, "Faith, faith Alfred." Alfred. Yeah. What? <laughs> I can absolutely see why that would annoy people. Hey, dude, if I were on his team, me. I'd be like, what do you mean, faith? I mean, faith. Like, do you not... Look, we have no reason to believe he'll just randomly show up here. Like, we, we legit have no oh, reason was, to think that. We have no clue. That was nuts, yeah. They're, they're just relying on him regaining his Boy Scout. Well, not even Boy Scout, just, just basic desire to be interested in whatever the hell is going on. Yeah. And then actually like a crazy doing zombie. it and knowing where to go and what to do and... Yeah, because the last time you saw him, he nearly killed you. <laughs> he also <laughs> blasted his laser at a bunch of people. Well, that was an. Oh, yeah, that's right. That that's was how I remember game. Superman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. It was his grand artistic scheme, maybe. Oh, about Zack, I guess, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Oh. Zeus or Ares would want to take one of the mother boxes. Yeah, probably. Uh, any of the like leaders of these larger factions would definitely be like, look, humans, you, you're fine, but uh, I think we should take care of this because you guys are like us, but with no powers. Yeah. Though, you know, when we jump forward to the future, like, humans are way more f capable than the Amazons. <laughs> like... With all oh, yeah. of our equipment and technology and numbers. That was another thing, that, th that thread I was made aware of about, that was like, it rebukes all of my points about the Snyder Cut, that was one of the ones, um, so... I said it's really fucking dumb what the humans do with, uh, with the mother box. I can't remember if, I think you might have disagreed with that, Rags, that you said that... Uh, I think it, it depends on the nature of the mother box. I think that... So... The idea of putting it in just... It, yeah, it depends on the nature of the mother boxes and how there is a a way to, I guess, it's based on what you know about them. If you are humans and the only reason that you, um, like if you're going to say, if you're going to say, hey, write this, but justify the humans doing it, I'd say, okay, the humans 
maybe don't know about the mother box. They think that the mother box can be hidden. And so their idea of hiding it, first off, we're making that grave a lot deeper. Uh, oh, yeah. We're throwing it down into the bottom of the ocean. Like you take the ship to the middle of the sea and drop it down into the bottom of the ocean, right? Because their understanding of maybe the capabilities of people is such that they don't think it's possible to even get down there. To them, they think it's a mythical place down below, uh, things of that nature. Um, but maybe the humans feel like, well, if we can't actually stop them regardless of where it is. So uh, The problem with the ocean one would be because Atlantis is in the ocean. I so. have many issues with this, but I was going to wait for the finish. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to make it work. Um, you would have to. Man, the the fact that humans are given one at all is already like we're already working with a huge problem. It would have to be some. You'd have to establish the belief that it could be hidden from the aliens. And I don't know how you do that. Because I don't know how you, if you are the Atlanteans and everybody else, why you would give the humans one of the mother boxes at all, with them being as as weak as they are in comparison. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to legit like think about it. Maybe there's a way, but I don't know. So, the the Wonder Women, the Amazons, they uh they put it in a big prison, obviously, and then have people defending it at all times, and then the Aqua people do the same thing, but for some reason with like five dudes. Um. Those are okay to me. Not great, but I think I even said, like, if these represent kill switches for your planet, that means that once people have that, everything is over. So I would build your entire civilization on top of this fucking thing and have every form of defense possible. You need to know when anyone takes one of these three, because that means that you're you know, one of three steps from annihilation, and you need to do everything you can to stop them from ever getting it. And they don't have any reason to believe that uh, uh, there's not a way to track these things, especially considering so, it's alien tech. Maybe we could work with that and say that because humans are now, I guess, isolated from the others, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know, we're, we got we to gotta really try to work with a broken thing here. The humans think that they are now separated from Atlanteans and the Amazonians, so they're all by themselves. And if they think that you need all three to destroy the world, and they know that they alone have absolutely no chance against these alien invaders, that they would want to get it away from their city. I, I don't understand why. Uh, because they, they wouldn't. Because wouldn't they, they just give it then to the to the other two factions? Well, well, I thought. Well, yeah, they would. Well, here's the thing: they would do a lot of things. But if we have to work within the premises of how do you write them putting it in the woods to be like even plausible, then I don't think that's a thing that can enter into it, right? Because then they wouldn't put it in the woods; they'd give it to the rest. Which I agree they would, but I think the question was asking how do we make that work, right? Um, because we both know that them having one at all isn't even something that should happen. Because humans are just, they're basically worthless power level wise. At least they were then. In terms of, yeah. Uh, but now, yeah, I, I could see how you could make it work if you give a lot of allowances. If you if if you were given, because you'd have well, to So how do you deal with the more. tracking problem? Like, we don't know that they can't track them. So why would we want to risk that? That just gives it to them for because free as opposed to ha having to fight us for it. Of which, because remember, humans fight, did make a difference in that fight. Did, and, well, what did they do? I forget. Well, so I helped. The, the arrows were killing the sorcerers, <laughs> so... It's oh. not, hey, I didn't write that, they did. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know, because... Yeah. If... Uh, I... I think you could make it work, but you'd have to... You'd have to change. You have to change some things. You wouldn't have to change everything, but if you change some things, they would still have to be important things. But I think you could make it a plausible thing humanity would do. I don't know. I need to be presented something more convincing. I I still don't know why humanity well, tends that, to cover a lot of this shit, um, especially if it's powerful enough to destroy the planet. Well, I, yeah, I think that, because it wouldn't be all of humanity who's making this decision, right? It would be just, like, the local, it would be the king, whoever's there, because humanity's so spread out, and they can't all communicate with each other. So it just has to be 
a certain abyss, a certain king or an emperor who is going to be making this decision. And so that that takes it from a collective decision to the decision of an individual, which helps us out immensely. Um, he has to think that it is better for it to be hidden in the woods. Even if it isn't hidden, it's just out there hidden. It, yeah, let's go with it. it. Hide it in the woods so that if aliens come, we can't do anything to stop them anyway. So at least there are two that they would still need to go through, and they didn't destroy our city in order to get it. I just, uh, I, mean, I, I don't disagree that you could make a character believe that, I guess. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's what you could do. And I don't think it's like super unreasonable for a character to think, well, if we're useless without the others, then there's no sense in all of us dying and building our civilization on the mother box when they would have to get the other two anyway. Because if we if you believe that the other two super civilizations can stop the aliens like they did last time, then you would rely on them to essentially do what they did before. Because if you think that the other civilizations can stop uh, Dark Side, Dark Side from coming back, then it wouldn't make a difference if he had one box, if he had to have all three, and you believe that he couldn't get two of them anyway. Because for you, sure the only difference... Com the, the, remember, the most powerful people in that whole fight probably are the Greek gods, which isn't a huge surprise, but um, the Wonder Woman people, uh, a lot of them get killed pretty easily. I thought... But I, I, the Greek gods are going to be with the Amazonians to the human's knowledge, right? I, I don't actually understand fully what the nature of that is, because they disappear at some point in Wonder Woman's canon. I guess. Or do they all get killed? But well, Ares that runs would, off. Because that would change the human's perception of the Amazonian power level. If we're taking the Amazonian and Greek gods together, which is, I assume, what was happening at that point, then then it would be more easy for them to believe that, oh, yeah, if the aliens come back, they're not going to be able to take it from the, the Greek gods and the Atlanteans, because they, they whooped them last time, so... Well, so the Atlanteans are even weaker then, right? Like, because they they don't have any of their tech from Aquaman, they just have standard tridents, I think that... Yeah, yeah, I guess this is before it. they're actually, like, at the bottom of the sea, right? I can't remember. I think it would to remember, because, wow, I oh, like I how I'm about... I appeal to it as if it makes sense, but I think you're right. I think the Atlanteans were like seafarers, but this was before... before We'd have to... Right. Before they became fish people. Yeah, you I would have to... So they were I just think guys you can with... make it work, but you gotta give allowances for the story. You'd have to change things up, because as it as it is right now, it makes no sense on many levels. I think if you gave me the ability to change a lot of the things, then I could make it work, but you, you'd have to change a lot. Because as it stands, I don't think you could... If, if we're not allowed to change any details, then no, I don't think it can work in its current environment, storytelling environment. Well, um, obviously, I made the point about that in the video, and then uh, the response I saw in this thread was that they didn't, uh, like, put it in the woods with the intention of not knowing where it, like, like, you know, trying to forget where it is or whatever. It was an accident that they forgot. Well, I, I don't believe that. I don't think that's I, what they intended in the film at all. You would have like, to... I, guys, I, have... I think that's worse. So, I was like, yeah, I okay. Would... I didn't want a woman explicitly state that the reason why humans buried it because they couldn't trust themselves with it. Well, I don't like, remember like what she said. I think that's exactly what she said. Um, yeah, I just can't yeah. remember. The main thing I remember is how shallow the grave was, if we can call it that. Oh, it was like a couple of yeah, feet. It was, yeah, it's like, why even really bother? Like an animal was, could dig that up um, by accident. Yeah. Um, yeah, you'd have to change a lot to make that work. I can legitimately see how you could, but you'd have to change a lot to make that plausible. It'd be a tough one. Yeah, uh... I think so. But as it stands in the Snyder verse thingy, no, it's super stupid on many, many, many levels, and it's dumb. Painful movie. It is a painful movie. Oi, Morley, what's this, a stream on a Monday? I, apparently it was. Uh, I was working late today. If you're wondering why I didn't see the beginning of the EFAP... Um, oh, fair enough. And what did you think of Lindsay Alice's video? I assume they're talking about the, uh... The one about cancel stuff? Cancel? I think she called it Mask Off. I um, I don't know if they're talking about that one, but it's a very, um... 
complicated video because it's filled with lots of very valid concerns for how horrible the life has been made by lots of people who've done very mean things to her. It's also filled with a lot of bitterness toward like every last person who fucking exists led into making her points make it be a little bit less uh, endearing for lack of a better term. And then we have the fact that um, she doesn't acknowledge basically at all that she's one of the biggest proponents of that very weapon being aimed at her. Right. Yeah. And the, they are not ready I mean, I to guess. lie in that bed. Well, the conclu well, the conclusion of that arc is she quit the internet. Um, so, yes, um, that's the, where this ultimately led. I think it was a recent EFAP we were actually talking about this. Um, I appreciated her assessment of events with, with support of Dare I say evidence, and I actually agree with a lot of what she talked about being the strategy and the motivation behind a lot of it. And then she attributes it to one group of people in her first speech, which was really stupid. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm way more interested in talking about the ideas behind all of this, and thus not Phenomenal necessarily itself. saying, oh, it's, it's yeah. this group, this group, this is like, no, it's just people will do this when they have a chance and it fits what they're motivated to get done. Um, but she chose only one side, and then even in her mask off video, she says, This thing that's happening to people and to me can't give it a name, even though there's already a name. Everyone's been using it for years. But because the right will weaponize it if we give it a name, which is absolutely bizarre, and I never understood that part of the video. Um, uh, Marcus from Tasm 2 debate should come on again. So, this is an old year old. Um, Marcus is going by uh, Sky now. And uh, I think she uh, is 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 uh, uh, still still making some videos. The last time I spoke to her, it was it was about um, uh, the potential for making a video on the Lego Star Wars uh, game because it's really bad. Uh, you guys who are listening to this will likely know about that because there was an EF app on it, or at least part of it. Um, maybe these. All cap words in the video were added in uh, by Marcus would explain the rage. Oh, are we talking about Osmonaut at this point? Because there's a couple in a different. Um, uh, I can't. Cosmonaut oh, didn't, didn't do. Cosmonaut made a, a video, right? Didn't he? Or does he do words on screen though? That's a common thing, but I don't think he does. I... Or does he do it? I don't know. It seems like it. Like he'd do that, but I can't remember anymore. We haven't watched the Cosmo video in a long time. Yeah, those hurt my brain. He brain should. <laughs> um, They're very bad. Also, thoughts on The Departed? Um, I haven't seen it. Oof. The film is an absolute chasm of tightly knit writing. It was such a breath of fresh air to watch after Snydertisms. Okay, so. It's odd phrasing. The, I know, yeah. Well, funnily enough, it's, it's even odder when you consider what I have come to understand the reality of the film. So, I praised it as a really great way of doing something very, very subversive. Um, which is, if you guys haven't seen it, would be a reason why I'd want you guys to see it. Very cool thing that happens in that movie in terms of an idea of how to structure your movie. It's one of my favorites from... I think uh, I'm aware of what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty well known, but I'll still avoid saying it just for a second. Um, yeah. It, the only thing is, I got a couple of comments being like, wow, you're praising the writing for The Departed? And I was like, yeah. You know, like, don't you know that basically the whole thing is taken from a different movie? Like an adaptation, and that they made it worse? I was like, oh. So, I never looked into that, or at least I haven't done yet. Um, so, now I, like, hesitate to talk about how well made it is, if it is just... It's kind of hard to say, right? Because, like, if you adapt something really well, is that thing allowed to be... You're allowed to say that's well written at that point, aren't you? Right? If you, well, I was actually about to say, like, you could... Both of those things can be true. It can be, it can be well written, but be a worse written version of something else. Well, to give you an example of what I assume is happening for that is The Guilty. I saw that oh, randomly, yeah. thought it was fucking amazing, excellent movie, and then I find out from the reviews that it's an adaptation of a Swedish film, I think? So that everyone's saying uh, it's Swedish better. or Danish. Yeah, One of those um, two. so I was like, oh, but the thing is, no matter how good that uh, source film is, no way I'm going to be calling Guilty badly written. No way. No, that's a great film. So, yeah, it's a curious situation to be in. So, yeah, uh, Departed, I have seen it, and I've, I've loved it for a long time, but maybe if I gave it a rewatch, I would conclude something else. Who knows? 
Uh, Mulesbury No Boy, Master of the McMuffins. Yeah, I'll take that title. It's a pretty cool title. Worse, uh, worse titles have been had. Hmm. I've been playing Kingdom Hearts 3 on and off, and I can confidently say that those games are more well written than the DCEU. Let that sink in. Oh my I, God. I've heard that those games make no sense. I've never um, assumed otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe, who knows. What was the... Because it's, it's, it's Final Fantasy mixed with Disney, is it? Disney, yeah. yeah, from what I understand. How did that come to happen? Like, I I don't know, honestly. I don't know. But, I mean, it's it's been a thing for a long time at this stage. Yeah. But, uh, oh, good for them for getting that sorted. Um... The character assassination of the Snyderverse heroes is because it's based on the New 52 comics, a revamp and relaunch of the whole DC universe in 2011 that was so bad that DC had to undo it in 2016. Uh-oh. They undid it? Yeah, they did, like, DC Rebirth. That was, like, a... I can't remember anything about it, but I think I was reading comics more actively at the time. It was, it was some kind of reset that kind of made it more like, uh, prior to New 52, which was, like, the massive reset of, like, the entire DC continuity. Why is it called New 52? Uh, it's because there were 52 comics that they've launched at oh. the time, I think. So they had 52 comic runs that they were running. Okay, and, the, and those regarded like individual characters, presumably? Not all on there. Yeah, yeah, so like Batman... Well, because um, one of the things with uh, DC was, I think up until that point, DC had maintained um, the numbering continuity of like all of their issues. So you still had like Batman 700 and stuff, and then it was like Batman 1 you know, Superman 1, Wonder Woman 1, like, there was a complete reset. That was hmm. Flash, Flashpoint reset, and then I think they changed it back with Rebirth. Because, like, to, to the old continuity. Because I think uh, one of the big changes with New 52 was Barry Allen Flash had actually, like, he died in Crisis on Infinite Earths in the 80s, and so he hadn't been part of it, uh, and neither had Supergirl, I think, either. They'd actually stayed dead for, like, 20 years. But, uh, then reset and bring him back. I think. Could be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, rags and all. Hottest right wing, left and center females. The fact that you said female makes me feel like it's a suitable question for you to, you to give. Like, it's... it's <laughs> just who you think's hot or whatever. Please, rag the females. It's like, alright. Rank the yeah. females <laughs> based on attractiveness? I'm a, I don't know. I'm just. I don't think I'm just that familiar with enough female content creators to to really know. Rags only likes watching. And you know, men. I. Well, it's, well, as we know, it's okay to objectify those. Um. Hey, maybe we'll progress in society to the point where no one gets to be attractive. Okay. Uh, the utopia. Finally, no one can be hot. Hello, lads. It's like syndrome, but for attractiveness. What are your thoughts on objective quality and classical music? Any particular composers that tickle your fancy? Hello, Raggletons. Tickling our fancy and being objectively good are different things, but I I don't know how to really. I don't know how you object. Sense. I don't know how you do like that with music, frankly. Yeah, I just don't know. I mean, it's I the same thing that we usually but I mean, say, I but it's more broad with music because we have less to be able to box it in with, I guess. But the, the idea yeah. that, um, of course, there's a difference between music and noise. Um, you know, yes. and, and then there's there's things we definitely but the appeal is that, to. Um, the problem is that it's hard because music theory, like music theory as a concept, it's like well, if you I mean if you would hit a music theory, then you're probably going to get a good understanding of just the basics of music and especially the musical vocabulary of uh, a lot of the West. But I keep hearing it in conversations. I can't really speak to it, but I guess it follows. The music theory is very much rooted in European musical conventions. And so if you venture elsewhere in the world, um, th there will be differences. And I don't know how you would qualify that one is necessarily better than the other, you know? Yeah, I, I know. just I just flat out do not know. It's usually as far as I go with music is whether or not I liked it. And an yeah, attempt there's a, at there's a lot of... About the instruments involved, the complexity of the layers, but that's about it. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of composers that I really, really like. Um more contemporary yeah. composers like Aaron Copeland, for instance. I really enjoy a lot of John Williams is absolutely fantastic. I was listening to uh, like the Fox. Indiana Jones theme the other day, and I'm like, man, this one often gets forgotten, but what a great theme, the Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones theme. Indiana Jones is a great theme, yeah. Often gets um, forgotten, what do you mean? 
I, I, I think that when people talk about John Williams' music, the, it, it isn't one of the ones that kind of rises to the top, and I think... What, other than Star Wars, what do you think would be the ones that people would cite over Indiana Jones and a curiosity? The Superman. You reckon? I think so. I think, I think people tend good. to go with that's, Indiana that's Jones before Superman, right? I, I just go on by, I think, what I've heard, but... Point being, I think that Indiana Jones is really, really good. And other ones that are... Uh, that I really like. Antonin Dvorak is really good. I'm a big fan of Holst. Um, I mean, to cite some of the greats, Beethoven. Uh, Bach. It's more Vivaldi. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough to really... Oh, man, I guess favorites? Yeah, I'd probably say those are my favorites. I'm really big fan of Stravinsky. I really, really like him. That man was ahead of his time. Um... And I would say, hmm, that's a sufficient answer for some of my some of my favorites. There you go. Tchaikovsky is really really good, actually. I, I really really like a lot of his stuff. Um. Uh... Mola, Abby's face model thinks The Last of Us 2 is stupid. That is true. Uh, I've seen what? the clip. She plays it on Twitch, and she says that uh, she thinks someone's doing something stupid at the moment, and then she says, to be fair, everyone in this game is stupid. It's really? Yep. <laughs> really? I imagine it was said with the intention to be tongue-in-cheek and fun, not to right. be joining in on the culture around <laughs> that <laughs> game. That's, that's interesting. I didn't know that. A few months ago, wrongly cancelled YouTuber Zaptai did an interview with Nicholas DiOrio. If he ever comes back, would you have him on? Uh, I don't know anything about him. I was going to say, for no more or less reason than any other person that we tend to, to have on, if, if, if we cross paths, I have no idea what that would have been about or over. I don't recognize Zaptai, really. I, I, at least I don't think I've ever seen any videos from Zaptai. Yeah, I, he's not familiar. They're, they're not familiar to me. Um, being, being but I, I just don't know. Wrongfully cancelled is bullshnizzles. You wouldn't want to have to deal with that. So hopefully not good. he's not good. all right. Uh, Rags from CNN. The president's use of the crisis label doesn't represent the administration's official position. Do we have a president? We we do we do have a president, and that's uh, that that's him. Uh, greetings, massives. Since January, I've made it all the way to episode eighty-eight. In the next month or so, I should be catching up on my first super chats. Tonald's story arc is probably my favorite bit of lore. Hi, Rags. Hi. What's become of Tonald? Um, he's taken down his cooking videos, from what I've heard. Bizarre. I don't know why he would take them down. They're so good. Yeah, yeah. It's so it well might be that they're not so algorithm friendly, and that's enough of a reason. I don't know why else he would do it because they they are good. Do you think that maybe he got like a really official job, someplace like IRL, and so he wanted to have that? But even they're so they're so inoffensive, and they like there's they can only reflect positively on him. Surely, I I, I don't know. Yeah, here we are. Um, but uh, yeah, talking with him was definitely a very strong highlight. Um, I watched a DC Rampage video while on a treadmill. Helped me burn 600 calories. Oh, well, nice. great. Also, please support Beyond the Pale RPG on Patreon. It's free. Support it it's on Patreon. Free? It's free. It's free? Yeah, I don't think that... Maybe you think that it's free, but you can give them money on Patreon, I assume, is what they meant oh, by that. Oh, that's I what they mean, right. Uh, that's probably what they mean, but... I, yeah, I'm not familiar with Beyond the Pale, so I, I couldn't speak to its quality or anything like that, so... Theme. This guy likes it, so yeah. there you go. Um... Thoughts on Willem Dafoe as Amazon in Diablo 2 Remake? As Amazon? Is that a class? Don't know. In Diablo 2 Remake? I do not know anything about I mean, Diablo, I'm afraid. Diablo Likewise. 2 Amazon. 
Amazon yeah. is a a oh the Amazon is a powerful woman warrior of the Ascari, so I assume that it's like a a class or a build. Yes, one of the original five classes in Diablo two. Yeah, he'd make a, he'd make a beautiful Amazon. All right, yeah. he'd make a lovely Amazon. He, that man, that is an actor. I know he could do it. That man is he knows what's up. Band four stick release the trank cut. I mean, you can if you want. I'll, I'd check it out because apparently it was a lot cut? darker. Yeah, well, Josh yeah, Trank uh, directed it, and um, the cut was very much like changed in the uh, editing process. Mm. I don't think I saw that because I heard it, ev all the terrible things about it, so I never mm -hmm. saw. Nobody it. liked it, really. Yeah. Bad. That was one of those movies that came out and everyone said, oh, they only made this movie so they could keep the rights to Fantastic Four. Well, War. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of a Morbius situation, you know, except less memed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mola, watch Vinland Saga. Wales is awesome in it. Well, that is a good reason to see it. I, I have I've a couple recommendations for that, but not quite yet seen it. Maybe someday. Um, rags, 4.3 million NICS checks in March. Thoughts? What? <laughs> NICS check? What is... National Instant Criminal Background Check System? 4.3 million checks in... I don't know what that means. Um, alright then. Uh... I, yeah, I, I, I got no clue what that means. Remember when Feige said Thanos' snap erased 50% of all life, including plants and animals? Feige tweeted uh. out, game we never saw the consequences. Yeah, it's and, just... And he was specific about plants and animals? Apparently, yeah. Wow, that's bold of you, Kevin. Well, and people Did you were saying about that? in one of the EFAP streams uh, that scene where Ant-Man is looking at the, the tree or whatever is supposed to be that he's noticing birds have come back. So the snap must have worked, which that's the closest thing I yeah. think I'll get to a, a, a confirmation of that in the films, but holy I, fuck, I we need to avoid that. doing anything like that. Well, then again, it's already fucked, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, feel like. Um, Snyder's abilities are more suited to his new film. If they're talking about Army of the Dead at this point, holy fuck. Yeah, yeah so I, here's the thing. Uh, They're not suited to any film. They're not suited to film. He's not a good filmmaker. Oh, my uh, video's done rendering. That's great. I'm not um, even... But, yeah, he's not He's not suited to film. He's not a good filmmaker. I I'll just say he's not suited to storytelling, really. That seems to be... I, I just... I don't know. I don't know what I'd be appealing to. I was really, about to say, it might be man. that filmmaking is actually... Because apparently everyone loves working with him. He gets... The job done, he's quote unquote. Really nice guy, yeah. He seems to care visually to respect source material, which is kind of a neat aspect. The fact that he he must then have been aware of it, you know. So adapting stuff is that element. But yeah, keep him away from. It might be a Ryan Johnson situation where maybe he is good to have creating projects, but he's just not allowed to affect the script. The only thing is, I don't see how you can have a director that doesn't affect the script. Well, the director is in charge of creative, so the director's always going to have an influence over the script to some extent. I was I was going to say, even if you take effort to, like, prevent him from doing that, like, legally as well, I still don't think that it's possible I don't think, to I don't, separate I think the naturally on the, on the set, you just end up having his influence because he's the director. But if we did that, and then it turned out we had a film that was, like, good, as in we put someone on the right and, and made it so he can't touch it, and it ends up really great, you know? Then I guess we've learned something about, uh... Because I remember liking Watchmen, um... But maybe that was more so the graphic novel that was pulling the weight. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Uh, thoughts on Avi Arad's DM's leak of what-ifs? I guess they're familiar? concepts for what-if episodes they would do. I, I'm not aware of them. I mean, Avi Arad is a, he's a Sony producer. Oh, I don't yeah. know that he's the Marvel uh, guy. 
Oh. I mean, I... he produces he produces a lot of Marvel he... films, but I'm pretty sure he's a Sony producer, not a Marvel Studios producer. Though they must Maybe be saying because this because it happened. I doubt that they're making this up just in terms of... Oh, sure, but I, I mean, yeah. But I have no idea what that's yeah, about. Yeah, I have no idea what the ideas If I knew what the ideas were, maybe we could give you more, I, but... I, I don't know why I'm you're still... Wait, what if ideas? Was that actually... Was that what the question said? What if ideas? There's a leak of yeah. what ifs. I assume I mean, that, that could I be referring to the What If series. I could assume? just be referring. Was What If out by then? I guess it wouldn't matter because it would be promoted. But um, What If came out in like August, but yeah. It was. Uh, I, I'm assuming they could literally just mean What Ifs as in alternate projects in line for Sony. Maybe. Maybe. It, it could be anything. I, I just. I don't know what it is. No idea on that one. Rags, you massive fairy. You never told us you're not working with Screen Rant. Or that you are working with Screen Rant. Twilight New I... Moon Pitch Meeting Thumbnail. Check it out, you bad doggo. Twilight <laughs> New Moon Pitch <laughs> you <win that>. Meeting <laughs> Thumbnail. Oh my goodness. Here, let me show you. <laughs> I had no idea. Uh... I had no idea. I, pro I promise you, I, I am in no way responsible for Twilight. Yeah, well, you'd say that now. You would say that, yeah. I used to, I used a fake name. I used the, I used the, the name Stephanie Meyer. That's my writing name. Your pen name, <laughs> yeah. My pen, yeah, my, that's what it is. My pen name. That's right. Bringy, be a bridge between our people, but don't murder a tank full of babies, please. Oh, because Superman did that. Yeah, it took me a while to remember. He because did do that. Superman did that. He said that Krypton had its chance, and then he went zoom. And then he killed all the babies. Seriously, that's what that was like a sleeper scene in terms of. I really feel like once we it's saw like it, the Aquaman genocide scene. Because I didn't remember that being a a thing of criticism for that movie, but then again, I don't remember a lot about it at all when we did the first rewatch. Um, Likewise. But that's a just, that scene is horrific. He's just killing it loads is. of potential life. And he's doing it for, and people, by the way, support this. They're like, yeah, because all of them would live lives that are restricted to a particular role. So it doesn't matter. And it's like, wow. Wow, so, but Superman gets to make that choice for them. Well, also, I suppose they don't even was... think it's up for debate that everyone would agree to kill humans. Say, for example, you're like, ah, I'm going to be really good at cleaning stuff. That's just, that's me. I'm good at cleaning yeah, stuff. Like, well, you shouldn't be, live. Be, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because Why if would it's up you to want me, to? It's like, what? <laughs> I know, it's a little bit of a malformed scenario, but if before I was born, I was asked, hey, do you want to live a life, but you're going to be a really good farmer? I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, please. Yeah, sure, I have no I problems it. being a good farmer. Well, presumably, if you're really good at farming, you'll be invested in doing it as well. You'll be like, yeah, well, yeah. I, I'm probably going to enjoy this work, right? Because I'll be good at it. This is an important job, and I, I really enjoy it. And I can farm and also have, like, a family and friends mm, all that and stuff. a life <laughs> and hobbies and things I enjoy. I'm not just going to be, like, farming 24-7. <laughs> I just, I like the idea as well that it's, it's like, yeah, but they're, they're, you know, okay, I guess they could have relationships socially, I suppose, I but they're, they're, they're hardcore yes. into sewage work. Why would you want them to live? <laughs> I don't know, man. So, I, get, I don't know, I just feel like there might be actual sewage workers who don't want to die in the real <laughs> world, that maybe? Really? <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm, I don't know. I mean, I've seen, I've seen Micro's well, dirty jobs, and um, they seem like they're people who just have a dirty job, but they have lives. Remember, they, they, they like to discuss whether or not it was ethical to take out Zod and the, the warrior class of fucking people who've come here. It's like, all of them are the same as those kids. that They've, they've bred to be warriors, right? That's the, the, the role they fulfill in society. And then, of course, yeah. um, Kal-El's mum and dad we're both that kind of human. Should they deserve to? D when when Zod stabs. Kal El, yeah, he broke the cycle. When somehow. Well, I, I think they say something about how he was. Had their genes. He was the first natural born. Yeah, like, fucking in, whatever. Um, yeah. But like when Zod stabs Jor El, are you supposed to be like, oh thank God, another one of those disgusting <laughs> creatures out of the gene pool? <laughs> Yeah, apparently the answer is yes, that was the correct uh, interpretation of that scene. Is that shocking, though, for a fan of the movie that has Jonathan Kent say maybe? It's like, maybe that's just, <laughs> yeah, it all follows. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you do, maybe that, that I mean, yeah. Maybe, He's, yeah. maybe Crypto did have his chance. <laughs> <Did you> kill <laughs> the babies? 
<laughs> a movie, man. What the fuck? It's it so is. bad. Right. It's awful. Some people think it's good. They don't even think it's like meh. They think it's good. They think that movie right. is Well, good. to be fair, before I rewatched it, I figured it was meh. I, that, that was always my perception of it. And it's like, I remember oh my being God, no, it is not. inoffensive to me in terms of just like, it's yeah, whatever. I can, I can believe people can watch that and be like, oh, this is just like a so-so movie. You know, but like yeah. that—that that doesn't bug me, because you know, it, because of the presentation and stuff like that. But man, like people think it's like really good, and they go to bat for it, and they know that film, and they still are like, "Yeah, this is really, this is really good. This is good shit right here." Yeah, it's it's tempting to consider making a video on because there's so many incredibly stupid things about it. Oh yeah. Re remember the whole like there are two drills, one that's quite near to Superman, one that's on the other side of the world, and he's like, "I'll go do the other side of the world one first. It's like, wh and it's yeah, like the military can handle the other. <laughs> that's in a city that is currently and fucking mashing out, it. They they could not handle it at all. Um, no, it, and then he has to come and handle. Oh god, that movie is so bad. <laughs> yeah. Remember he gets attacked by the giant CGI snake. Yeah. Demon, the thing, whatever the hell that was. That happened. Yeah. Oh, good times. Really? No inhabitable places. Whatever the fuck. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, check out Legion. It's about David Haller, Haller um, a guy who diagnosed as schizophrenic as a child, but learns that he was a psychic mutant. Also, his father is Charles Xavier. Oh. I've heard of that show, but I'm. I could see how that would be a die if if you can if you're young and you can't really understand your powers yet. I can believe that as if a child conveys that to someone. They're like, "Oh, you're hearing voices," and like, "Yeah, the voices of like you know, it's, it actually is kind of like having people in your head." So you diagnose them as having you know some kind of that'd be interesting. Yeah, well, I've heard good things about the show. So uh, Thomas trained more than Ray. Um, Thomas. I don't think is there a Thomas in Snyder Cut? Thomas. Thomas Wayne, but I don't alive in it. No. He's in it. Um, it might have been something we were talking about in general. Thomas. Thomas. Well, a lot of people have, so I don't disagree. Um, what the tank engine when? He spots a tank engine, man. He's more of a more of a free spirit. Free, moist spirit. He lives life on no rails. Um If I get NordVPN, it's definitely not going to be with this sponsor code. I'll be going to NordVPN.com slash I, I mean, you know I'm not gonna read it just in case I have no idea what I'm said as I would too. To get seventy percent off the three year plan. Hey, you know, I hear NordVPN is good. If you guys need a VPN, uh, maybe maybe that one. Maybe you should check out all of them, though, and see which one's the best. Is there any difference between all the VPNs? Like, do any of them offer... I guess it would be prices. I just mean, like, is there any difference in service? I don't know. I, I uh, just I do think not they'd know. all say that they've got different speeds, but I, I couldn't tell you. Hmm. Nord, Express, I can't remember the other one. <laughs> you know? Uh, Live-action JJ the Jet Plane with real human faces. Yeah, do it. <laughs> that was uh, in watching the, because um, this will date the video as well, YMS is a Lion King video. His, the first part is out. Yeah, saw, saw that today. It, like, oh, yes, this is live action when it is literally categorically a 3D yeah. animated yeah. film. Yeah, in no way um, is it live action. I have no way ugh. to describe that video other than it's so fucking agreeable. Everything he's saying yeah. is like, I agree, I agree, yep, yeah, I agree. Just like the, oh, yeah, hey, you know what? Changing Sky, you did such a great job, yes. Oh, man. You, yeah, and all of... You clearly tell. I almost feel bad. A great deal of because you can tell with some of the interviewers' questions that the cast and the director stuff, they know what is being pointed out here. Like, oh, you brought back James Earl Jones. You didn't bring back everyone else. And it's like... Yeah. Because uh, you, you know that the, 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 they can't... They, how do you answer that in a way that's like respectful to everyone? You're like, we're trying to offer, you know, a, a new sort of look into a, into a character, you know? And then it's just Except like so much worse. Except for I guess. <laughs> Except for him. Well, yeah, that he says it's that joke that like everyone is, 
replaceable except James Earl Jones, which, by I the way, is know. going to become so fucking true when they don't have him for Vader's voice. It's just... Even he can't really do yeah. Vader's voice, unfortunately. Um, well, I, think, I mean, uh, look I what think they the did with Luke. Would be Phil Lamar. He's probably like the... Because I think Phil Lamar voices him in, the, in a lot of games and other material. That's probably the closest you're going to get. I think I'm a bit... I'm a bit floompy with so like Force Unleashed. People were saying like that's a really good Vader voice. It's like it was. It never came across as convincing to me. I don't know. There's something about James Earl Jones's voice specifically. He's got a very distinctive way of speaking. Like Empire Return yeah. of the Jedi, Vader is just this very hard to recapture uh, entity. Yeah. Perhaps you think you're being treated unfairly. <laughs> that's such a good line. He's got so many great lines. Great fucking character. I yeah. wonder how long that'll be. Oh god, we will have seen Obi Wan. Oh by the yeah, time this comes yeah, out. yeah. That's right. <laughs> hey guys, how is Kenobi? We haven't seen it yet. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sure it was great. Please be good. I'm sure that I'm sure that will be singing its praises. It's gonna be just like all the other Disney shows. It's gonna be wonderful and amazing, and it's gonna be a triumph. And Max, I just don't wonderful. think this. this yeah. No, well, none of the characters, none of the characters are going to be ruined, and the world building is going to be great, and it's it's awesome. Everything's great. Hey, Everything's Fringy, great. Is there anything more satisfying in Mario Kart than nailing a hit with a green shell? Uh, yeah, those are really fun because it's like I did that. That was me. <laughs> that was me. Nobody else but me. What about hitting a nail with a green shell? Oh, that's tough. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Mm. I guess how far you are away to mix. Kind of determines the it's, toughness. It does yeah. Have a big, yeah, yeah, it does. It's a big part of, you know, difficulty. Um. Hmm. Funny you should mention that Midnight Bear. Funny he should mention that. Midnight's Edge says Zack Snyder is in talks with Marvel to reboot Ghost Rider. Holy fuck, keep him away. Jesus. Ghost Rider <laughs> is so cool. Can we please have one yeah. that's not shit? Not Zack, please. Good God, if they announced that Zack Snyder is working for Marvel, I'd be like, we're done. It's over. There's just no hope. And you're like, well, what about... And then they, they announced, like, James Gunn and Edgar Wright working together, and I was like, no! Zack Snyder is involved in your universe. It's done. It's all dead. He's gonna make everything horrible. <laughs> As if it's not already horrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was dry to... I feel bad. I love playing as him in, uh... Ultimate Alliance. I was just like, this fucking Ghost thing Rider is so cool. will be showing up soon. It's only a matter of time. Because, like, I think he risks bordering on Edgy the Hedgy, but then you find out what his job is, and it's kind of like, man, that's fucking cool. And also kind of creates incredible implications for whatever world he's a part of. Yeah. Which, uh, I'm sure they'll just roll it right in and not give a fuck. Uh... Hey, I started watching at episode 50, and now I'm on my third rewatch of EFAP on episode 36 now. Hope you're having fun. Boy, most impressive. What an adventure that most is. Impressive. It's sad because we know that thanks to the Luke Skywalker robot that everyone clapped and cheered for, that Darth Vader is just next in line for that treatment. Oh. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, everyone's next in line for that treatment, right? Like, it's, uh... Yeah. I think that they no consider really that successful. Gone. Dude, when it I first happened, the praise for Luke in that episode was through the fucking roof on Twitter. I was like, oh, damn. And we didn't even notice, like, the... Yeah, we didn't notice what it was. We just noticed that it was just... He just, just seemed tired w and dull. What I will say is wasn't... that we noticed all the overt character fuck-ups, like, why the hell is he torturing yeah. this baby? What the fuck's going on, you know? <laughs> and then it's like you know, listen to his voice, which we weren't doing a lot of because that episode was annoying all of us quite a bit. Um, yes. Makes me wonder, and like... And then it came out. It's totally a robot. It's just a corporate simulacro of something that you liked for whatever reason, and everyone ate it the fuck up. They gobbled that shit down and sung its praises, and you wonder why this stuff keeps happening. I wonder how it feels to be the person that's being robotified and recreated. You see that and you're like, oh. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say, I wonder what it feels like to be the one person in, like, who wakes up from the dream and everyone else is still asleep and you're trying to warn everyone and tell them but they don't believe you because they're in the dream. What, what was that movie? Um, 
with the the blue aliens. Uh, he puts on the glasses and he could see them. Uh, oh, they live. Yeah, they live. Yeah. Well, imagine. What it feels like sometimes they... watching Disney shit. I know this is. A... It's harder to say because there's so many other things you'd be concerned with, but if we wipe all of them out, the obvious ones, if you went back in time, but let's say a few weeks after EFAP was created, would you feel any kind of need to be like, is there anything I can do to prevent the disasters that are about to be created in the next few years? It's like, I guess there's nothing you could do, is there? Yeah, I don't think there's anything I could do. I'm, I mean, I would, I would make some pretty, I would make some pretty accurate predictions. But, um, I wouldn't, yeah, I, I don't think I'd, I don't know, if the goal was to, like, to, like, we, we, we were given the time travel, but the time traveler magician man, he said, oh, but you can't let, no one could, you know, you can't give it away that you've been able to do it, but you could be like, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that'd be fun, but, yeah, I don't know what we could actually do, apart from illegal things, <laughs> so, yeah, I think we just have to be, we just have to say, buckle up. Well, we're in for a ride. Like I said, it, it, there'd be way more important issues to deal with, but uh, if if we were to strip all that away, like, if you had all that information, and there was no caveat from the wizard, he was like, do whatever you want. Um, imagine you did make a video before 2017, or even Force Awakens, and you basically just that go, would be interesting. this would be how to kill the franchise, and you outline the broad strokes of the entire Everything. sequel trilogy. And then that you would talk. be super cool. Imagine the fucking reaction from people. It's like, how did you nail this? And all you say is like, well, I thought for a long time of how to best kill the franchise. Yeah. And they did it. I didn't it. think they'd actually <laughs> do it, the mad lads. I wonder if you releasing that video, you, you'd want to make it poorer production so that it doesn't get as much promotion and thus avoidance because it was actually seen by Disney, you know? Or maybe you'd want the opposite. Who knows? Then That's again, the thing. as soon as the first movie comes out and it matches your summary of the first of three perfectly... They'd be like, what the fuck? I think it, it would get news the, the, if it were that close. Yeah, absolutely get news. Everyone would be like... Everyone would assume they stole never... your uh, idea. And to be fair, yeah, I'd probably that... believe it. I'd be like, there's no way it can be this close without them stealing. Yeah, you'd never... You would never rationally assume time travel. No. You would assume that the corporate, because there's precedent for corporations stealing shit from, you know, people in terms of art and designs and things. So you'd be like, yeah, they, they just stole the idea from this little YouTuber and they thought they'd get away with it. It would be so funny if you just went scorched earth and so like all these other companies are like, that's deplorable, you should never steal it. And then you just see which company said that, like Sony, and you're like, all right, let's just predict the plot of, you know, TASM or whatever. Yeah. You're like, you stole it, the Sony are like, what? No. And then you single-handedly bring down all these companies with lawsuits. That would be funny. You would be the Nostradamus of YouTube. And then they're like, how come your um, your information doesn't go any further than, like, the end of April into 2022? You're like, um... I just I don't want to do it so anymore. I've videos, <laughs> you know, yeah. I've, I feel I have, I have shared my expertise so much that now I would like to retire. That would be interesting if you just uploaded a video and disappeared from the internet. You just you just disappeared. You never you, no announcements, no nothing. You just one day you just disappeared. And that one video just has all predictions for all the media that you could come up with on the spot from yeah. having be ruined. You're just like, Holy yeah, fuck. who is who is you'd have a, a name, Rusty Shackelford or something, and you're like, Who is he? Where did he come was uh, his accent is it's weird and we don't know where he's from and he's like, what? What's going on? How did they know? Did they? The, they would say that you were a Disney insider, right? They'd say that you were an insider in these companies, or you'd say, they'd say one of the executives, you know, conspired with a YouTuber to put this out there. Something like some disgruntled employee. Well, imagine the, like, there, there'd be all kinds of not unreasonable theories people could come up with. YouTuber told by the government, like, we have to find this person. What did they have loaded from? Find the address. Use the IP address, rather, or whatever. And they, and they trace it back to like. You uploaded it on like a burner laptop in the middle of Russia or something, just to make sure they could never find you. Or even you just you you let them catch you and because you and you'd be like I, I I legitimately just was like I I just made the video and I guessed and it was based off of what you could do to ruin the franchise like I like what do you think I am some kind of fucking time traveler? They wouldn't be able no to prove it. So I don't yeah, know. I don't think they would even believe you. 
if you if you just told it to them straight to their face, he's like, yeah, I'm a time traveler. I'm from the future. I you know, don't think they would believe you if you told it straight to their face. What's really funny though is if in 20, let's say 13, 14, you went up to J.J. Abrams and described the plot of Rise of Skywalker, he'd probably laugh. Be like, what a stupid movie. And you'd be like, yeah, I know. It's crazy. And then he takes out his notepad and furiously scribbles things out. I mean, I would even take it to 2050 when, when uh, Force Awakens is done and you go, this is the plot of the third movie. He'd be like, okay. Yeah. Like Palpatine's I know, back, I know huh? how to give people what they like. I would never do this. Um, the Star Wars universe clearly failed because it's not like Marvel. Hmm. Mm. In some ways it's true, and in some ways it's not. It depends on how you mean it. I mean, Marvel clearly has mastered this formula of printing money. So in that sense, deviating from it is certainly, well, they wanted, I guess, risky in a way, but... I was to become a money printer, and it was almost there, but then Ryan fucked everything up. It really was Ryan Johnson who fucked that up, because everyone adored TFA. I mean, it was... Everyone loves it. Not as much now, of course, but... Still, it really was. Ryan Johnson ruined everything. Everyone loved Rogue, Rogue One, you know? Everyone... If everyone loved TLJ... Board. I wonder how Solo would have done. Because I think I, at that I point, more. I would have been arguing, hey, Rogue One, pretty cool. Force Awakens is fine. Presumably, if I hadn't seen ER's video at that point, I can't remember when I watched it. Um, let's say that that was what our sentiment was. And TLJ, you know what? Let's pretend in this scenario it's great. It was one of the greatest yeah. movies ever. We go, I think this Solo movie, you know, as much as... I don't think we really need a solo movie. Maybe it's maybe it's gonna be good, and maybe there will be more hype to see it, and then more people would go in. Dare I say, without a fucking hatred of Disney at that point, Disney Star Wars, and maybe they would enjoy it more. And that knock-on effect, you know. Hmm. The Rise of Skywalker it's... ends up making five billion. I mean, you never know. Yeah, if, no, if no, you no. were going to say, give me a, what is the hypothetical franchise that could make a movie that makes $5 billion? I don't think Star Wars is an unreasonable answer. Um. Any more? Why isn't this like Marvel? The anti-art equation. The anti-art equation. I like it. Yeah, to put it that way, yeah. Uh, the anti-art equation. The anti-rat equation. Another way to put it. Hello all, Mola. Not sure if you've already been asked, but what are your thoughts on how well, how well God of War 4 holds up objectively? So, I have a lot of mixed feelings on it. I think, from my first run through, I love the story, and specifically the character work for Kratos. However, I know there's lots of videos that I would probably like to spend some time watching that go over how it's ruined his character, actually. I don't know if we're dealing with a Thor Ragnarok situation, or we're dealing with, um, a, a, this would be less generous, I suppose, a, a situation where fans are annoyed that their previously beloved games are being treated as though they're shallow for character compared to the new one, and thus feel defensive for it. I know that that sentiment's gone around. There's, there was that one that got shit around a lot, saying, uh, Kratos was always a deep cow character, you cowards, or something like that. Um, so, uh, uh, I guess the thing on that is, I'm not sure about that yet, but um, mechanically, the game is complicated. Because I think it functions pretty well mechanically, uh, excluding several fair criticisms. One of the bigger problems, though, is how long you spend with those mechanics in that story. It's, it's a while, and how harshly they push them for the hardest difficulty stuff. Which, um, as I have said before, you want to press the mechanics of a game to their limits to see how well they function. Going on the hardest difficulties will often reveal what isn't working with yeah. them because you end up needing to be precise. And so if they don't fucking follow yeah, your instructions... Learn what you can and can't get away with necessarily. Yeah. What your crutches may or may not have been. Um, so it's hard to say, uh, but I do intend to replay it at some point as well as the other three originals. And uh, that was always actually an intention to make a video on, and maybe one day I will. So, hard to say, but... 
But now I still very much like the game. And it was, at one point, Metal's favorite game of all time. I don't know if it still is. Let me guess, Elden Ring is it now? Well enough, I think Elden Ring could be, but I think he said he prefers Dark Souls 1 still, so I assume Dark Souls 1 ranks above it, and since that ranks above it, God of War 2018 probably ranks below Dark uh, above Dark Souls, because I played that after it. I don't know, I guess we'll find out someday. Who we'll ask you? Just because you didn't expect to get stabbed in the gut doesn't mean it's bad. Marcus Baggins. Um... I'm not clear on what would have been said in the video that made that relevant, but I'm sure it was something similar. similar. Molly, you helped me get over my fear of British people. Oh. That's <laughs> good, I guess. That is good. And fear British people. For a lot people. of people, yeah, everyone has their British person who helped them get over their fear. For a lot of people, it's like Gordon Ramsay or something like that, but... He's a good he's one. got over that fear. I mean, I love I the guy, but um, but I'm sure some people are afraid of him. Oh well, I think Rags is saying a fear of British people in general. They may still fear him specifically. Ah, but no. Yeah, like or British they realize that he's honestly. actually well. It depends if they watch the UK kitchen, yeah, kitchen nightmares. Then they'll, it, it'll be a lot easier to get over their fear. But if they watch the American kitchen nightmares, it might be it might take them a while longer. To, that you know. soundtrack telling them when to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Yep. Done. Uh, I'd actually like an explanation for that, though. In summary, if you would. Oh, that's all it says. Well, <laughs> summary. <laughs> oh, uh. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, I don't know how to answer that. Yeah, I can't tell if it's related to any of the previous ones. Uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, man. Also, yeah, hi, I Ragu, Metal, Mola, and others. Hello. Hello. Hey. The 1997 Winnie the Pooh movie was pretty dark. There was a point where Pooh got depressed in a giant stone bowl because he was alone and couldn't get out. Disney yes, used to be cool. That, that is Pooh's Grand Adventure. That is a that is a movie that I watched as a kid, and when they did get to their destination, shall we say, yeah, it was kinda it was spooky for a for a for a Pooh movie, essentially. But that that would be one of those animated movies that I, I'd almost be like curious to show you guys to see you know like what you would think of it because that because Pooh's Grand Adventure was I don't know there's something about it where I almost feel it was one of those animated shows or animated movies that was kind of made with the understanding of you know what kids might actually be able to consume some slightly slightly unsettling content which is not what you'd expect in a Pooh movie but there's aspects of the Pooh movie where you just felt you felt isolation and sadness and like there was a grim atmosphere to some of these places. And you're like, wow, that's, you know, to um, a kid, that, that might be something interesting. Correct me if I'm wrong, isn't in the Rugrats, one of the Rugrats movies, Tommy considers killing um, his brother with a rock. He's, he picks it up and he's intending to hit him in the head with it to kill him. I never saw. I don't the, remember uh, that because I've seen movies. that film, but I don't remember that. I can't remember if that's, I've made that up or if that was a thing that happened. But yeah, in the category of like, yeah, things used to get a little darker for kids' content back in the day. Well, yeah. just a bunch uh, of the classic Disney movies, you know. You look yeah. at stuff like the Great Mouse Detective, like yeah. legitimately yeah. some jump scares in there. You there. see, you see Radigan is see. like scarier than a lot of horror film. Radigan is legit scary. He turns into like a beast. Like mm -hmm. at the end when they're fighting on the London Clock Tower, um, Big Ben. Uh, Big Ben. When that's, no. that's definitely a fat movies thing. Yeah, I mean, there's like That'd some scary fun. stuff. You see like a cat eating a mouse. Like, it, well, a silhouette and the gulp and everything. And you're just like mad. Because he's singing as he, because he's drunk and he's singing a song as he's being eaten, and so you hear the gulp and the music stops. You're like, yeah, that's kind of well. Grim. And also, you know, like um, Hunchback, a lot of scary imagery there when Frollo. Uh, damn, I mix it. Frollo was the villain, yes, and yep. it was Ozzy. Frollo is the villain. Quasimodo. Yeah, that. when it, when he's, you know, he he pulls up his sword over like the while they're over the fires. It's like, jeez, like. Oh yeah, god the, damn. The, I mean the gargoyle comes to life. Yeah. And like, ah, like yeah. And um it's a it's a commonly cited one for one of the more grisly ones, Clayton in Tarzan, when he cuts all the vines and then when he slows down you, you only see, a see silhouette. it. Yeah. They the had silhouette is in, in the thunder. Films. 
Yeah, oh, it and, is uh, in the thunder. Return to Oz, oh, which lightning. we will do for Halloween Epop movies at some point, because one of the scariest things I ever saw as a kid. To the point there where I think they may have failed to do the rating properly on that one. <laughs> yeah, I I think that you should challenge. Yeah, sometimes kids can handle. I think more than you, and they might. It's like me. Wow. I, I think this is kids a little bit of a personal maybe, story. But, yeah. Um, when I watched Spider-Man Two for the first time, when Doc Ock, the the scene in the hospital, scared the shit out of me. Um, I just remember thinking it was about, fucking awesome. <laughs> so. I, it really, it really freaked me out. That was a scary I scene. Why? I can see why. That yeah. is a scary scene, really, especially yeah. if you're, you know, younger. You know. There's screams in it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, like in the claws as People well. People being dragged into the dragged darkness? Yeah, yeah man. Ugh. And all the eyes as well, yeah. You know, we get to see the POV of all of the tentacles. That's a that's a fucking fantastically made scene, it like, is. visually and from a sound design standpoint. That's, like, the thing I'm looking for. Well, this will date it. That's like, for all of the concerns about, like, Multiverse of Madness, I'm hoping that there'll be some, like, cool as fuck, you know, use of light and sound and everything in that film. Yeah, I hope so, too. Uh... I hope the plot's good, but... <laughs> uh... I feel like we've already given up on that being a potential. <laughs> like, well, oh. I, and I guess the thing is now is, like, well, characters, it's like, man, like, damn, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, we'll see. You know, like, Scarlet was attacking that little temple place. I'm already in my head yeah. thinking, like, I think they're gonna even address why you can't just portal her out. Uh, well, I, I maybe, because she, well, maybe she can account for that, right? Because she's chaos magic, which is some crazy shit that he can't do, I guess. Is that, is that something he can't do? I, I have no idea. I wonder if they would just be as simple as, like, strange, get her out of here. And then he's just like, I can't. Anything I use on her doesn't work. Well, it would just have to be a matter of if he can portal her out, can she portal herself to places? Can she teleport? Maybe she can now. Well, still you do it, right? Because it would just, that would just uh, interrupt Yeah, you. I guess it would. Well, and and, if, and everybody there can do portals because they're all, they're all uh, wizards. They're and all wizards. And you know trained. what? Just do what he did in Infinity War. Cut her fucking limbs off. Well, yeah, but we forget that that's a thing that we can do a lot. <laughs> that's what I mean. It's you, so you funny because if they'd never shown it happening, we can at least be like, I don't think that's possible. But they I did show it happening. Happen, yeah. They made it very explicit. It was like, why did you do that? Well, yeah, because Rick and Morty has shown that the portal gun can slice people up, but, like, they use it all the time as a thing. Like, in combat, Rick will mm, often use the portal five. gun as a weapon. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, Disappeared yeah, Disappeared yeah. for so many episodes for no reason at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know the reason. Awkward to account mm. for it. When are we getting the Bly Manor EFAP discussion episode? Catching up so comment may have already been addressed. Well, since it's a year later, theoretically, uh, I guess we can address it again. It's not a ready a yet. A year last. <laughs> yes, a year closer to when it would have released. Yeah, um, that's right. The plan a year. will be... I think I mentioned it on the... Uh, update stream, but I, I would like to start a whole thing of EFAP TV where we'll go through shows, and I'll probably rebrand the uh, the Hill House one to that. Be exciting. But, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do more than just Flanagan shows. Who knows what'll be on the plate, but yes, you'll get it eventually. There shall be no rush for it. We'll even do Midnight Mass again. You guys gonna look forward to rewatching that? Uh, to some extent. Midnight Mass? Yeah, of some of it. Enjoy. Some of it. Just most yeah. of it, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually I most of it. Just, it might be a bit most tainted by the knowledge of what comes, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because boy, that last episode. Um, uh, hmm. Oh, well, you know what? Here's confirmation. I've been reading them backwards the whole time, but that's fine. Because there's a part one, part two, and it's in reverse order, so. But, oh, there's whoops. a Mauler. Um, someone on the Discord is sharing a Reddit thread of awful Buffy takes. I really need to hear your view on the worst of these. And, uh, they've got one here. Um, hmm. How can I get this to Fringy without spoiling anything to Rags? Well, they've said... That's, uh, I don't even know if you'll get that as a reference, Fringy, but, um... Hmm. Well, they say. Should I just <laughs> take my headphones off for a moment? Um, use the, uh, the, the mute thing so I can see it, and then you'll only need to put it on for five seconds, and then I'll, I'll say what it is. Alright. No, not that one, the one with the headphones. There you go. 
Uh, Spike being in season seven makes it worse. That's the take. Oh man, you're just so wrong. <laughs> it's the uh, there's so much great stuff that you lose. Most of what I have to compliment that season has to do with Stems that element. from that character. Yeah. So yeah, um, but we, we yeah we. You'll be safe now, Rags. We won't, we won't, no it's more. okay, Rags. You, yeah, it's it's a safe place for doggos you haven't seen. <laughs> that's right. That's good. That's good. The take is horrible. I get, I get confused with yeah the, the the how they say like the muted muted and deafened is mm -hmm. yeah all's um, well all safe. Yeah, don't worry. I'll probably try and find some bad Buffy takes for when we actually go through it, so we can check them out. Or we'll try and make you aware of them as we go. I think I did with Fringy when I was watching it with him. I was like. When, whenever certain events happen, I'd be like, did you know that people think of this as this? And then Fringy would be distraught. He would plan, kill everyone, you know, and stuff. No, nothing like that. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Um, my long, long man. I ask you to explain in what way exactly the first Avengers is better than the others. Oh. Where do I even begin? Uh. Oh. There's no I fundamental will. writing issues in... The Avengers, to my knowledge, while all the other well, ones have them. I think, uh, yeah, the tough thing would be that when we talk about plotting, power levels, um, like, those are significantly compromised to, you know, varying degrees in the other films. Um, some of them achieve good character stuff, some of them not so much. Yeah. Avengers is pretty, like, it's, it's, it's pretty strong, um, as a film. I think that'd be the way to describe it. It's solid. Well, interestingly, the they films, follow up saying, up. I enjoy the other ones more, so I mean, clearly that means they're the better films. Um, my emotional high point, probably for the, the selection of the Avengers films strictly, would be the uh, Iron Man's death, um, which belongs mm -hmm. to Endgame. The only problem is, as time goes on, right. it becomes a little less effective. Um, and then, of course, it should be like, my emotional reaction shouldn't determine fuck all, really, if we're going to try and... Talk about how oh the writing is between a lot of them. Avengers one, I think it gets shot on a lot because of the fact that it's like it's it's a lot of setup while trying to do payoffs, while Endgame is like all payoffs. It, like, it benefits from its position in the timeline as opposed to how well written it is. Uh, the thing is, there's a lot of payoffs in, in Avengers. It um it fixes Hulk, puts him in a really good position. Same for Black Widow. Got a. Um, it it sets the stage for Cap and Iron Man's uh, arcs pretty well, like like bringing them forward and sort of dare I say developing where they're already heading, because their respective oh, yeah. sequels kind of. I mean, you guys know what we think of Winter Soldier and Iron Man Three. Mm, <laughs> boy. And then you got um Thor. Thor's fine in it. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, he's, right. yeah, he's, fine. he's pretty straightforward. Um, and then Loki's pretty damn great in Avengers. Go on. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, I don't know. The, the, the short answer would just be that we think it's uh, the least flawed while maintaining a lot of its uh, strong character work out of the lot. Uh, is it Infinity War second, then Age of Ultron, then Endgame? Uh, that would be the order that I would put them in, yeah. So does this mean Rags' Mando video is only season 1 episodes 1 through 4 and we're not getting any more long form edited Mando vids from him after? No, no. So I guess my plan was cuz I'll have I've got two that I'm going to do that I that that are smaller before I kind of get back to work on the Mando project and I have a lot of it done. A lot to go, but a lot is done. Um I don't know yet how exactly that's going to release. I might like, yeah, I just don't know. It might be a two-parter. I think I would finish it all, but release it in two different parts. Hmm. Uh, so it has a sort of consistency with itself in a way. Or that's just, I don't know, I, so I could just go through it and then find a part where it's part one, part two. Or am I, I might just do uh, the whole first season at once. I, just, I really don't know yet. And I don't know if I'm going to release it maybe i'll do two parts where one of them is a general overview of explaining why things like like nothing freaking works in that show and the other was like an episode by episode breakdown i've got it all scripted out and like I've, I've got it all written so it, it'll get it'll get put to you somehow i just don't know how yet you uh you wrote for that one too 
Was it notes or was it actual script? Actual script for this one. Huh. Yeah. If I think if I do a review on something like that, I will rewatch. I will script things out. Mm -hmm. I might not stick to the script 100%. Uh, so it has a more casual flow as I speak it aloud. But yes, the, those are absolutely scripted. Did you script um, Fallout video? I remember. I think so. I was about to ask, hmm. like, that must have been difficult to do if you didn't script it, right? Because... I, th I must have. I don't I don't remember. That's the thing. I don't remember. Uh, but I, I think I probably did. If I didn't script it, I had heavy, heavy, heavy notes. Uh, but I, I legit cannot remember. Mm -hmm. I probably did. Um, also play DDLC Dumbos. Of course. Mm -hmm. At least can someone make uh, a cartoon... I mean, yeah. oh. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll someday maybe. Maybe. At least can someone make a cartoon version of the Dawn movie cartoon, please. That would take a while. Pretty please. I need the Dawn in our lives. I think if you're going to do a serious reboot and correction of the failures of, uh, you know, the MCU, you would need to start fresh with the Dawn solo movie. First of all, just win back some faith from the audience that things are actually going to get better, because why the hell would they think otherwise? You're gonna get it with fucking Ant-Man 3. Mm -hmm. I wonder who the villain in Ant-Man 3 is gonna be. Kang, right? Oh, is it? Kang? Yeah, I think so. Wait, it is? It's Kang? Yeah, that's not like a guess. I'm pretty sure he's the villain. I was about to ask mechanically what is happening there, but I assume you uh, wouldn't have any idea. <laughs> I'm not even gonna ask. Yeah. The Quantumania. I'm so excited, guys. What's going on there? You, you, Ant Man is your favorite hero, huh? Hopefully, the fact that they call it Quantum Mania implies that there's almost a tongue in cheek aspect to all of it that makes me at least be able to swallow it more. I don't know, man. I find that, that their vision of that is just lampshading. They're like, whoa, you put Quantum at the beginning of everything, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, the guy mainly explaining everything does do that, huh? And yet, we have Michelle Pfeiffer, who has, like, quantum powers and can heal... Ghost? That was her name, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know why that's the case, but... <laughs> yeah, that's just the thing that can happen. Um, if it takes a week to walk a fortnight, how many bananas are in a bunch of grapes? I feel like those are two separate seven. questions. I guess they are different questions. Yeah. Yeah, I think like, you're right. How long does it take to walk? Uh, how far can you walk in a fortnight? Seems very disconnected from the, you know, what what are the quantity of grapes or whatever the second one was that I've already forgotten. You know what? Maybe that was missing from the Batman, where there was a riddle he found. He was trying to figure it out, and the Riddler eventually was like, "That one was bullshit." I was just making it up. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's actually <laughs> nonsense. Yeah, just 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 turn turn the page over that. That's actually. I was just having fun. He's like, oh, I left that I one in. That was actually... like a draft of. I didn't. That's not. Don't worry I was about just going to see if you try to figure it out. <laughs> Hello, guys. And Mola. I love rewatching your In Defense of Dark Souls 2. Will be my 10th time. Damn. Wow. That's uh... It's that's the most deceptive else. video in history. I give five minutes of praise and then I say, now. I'd like to criticize. Good to that's be balanced, a, isn't it? Uh, the uh, the hitbox section is um is really funny to me. I think that <laughs> I section works really well as well because it's you don't need any context to understand how bad that is. How bad it is? It's not something that anybody's gonna ever argue against. No, it's it's it is it is neutral that uh, getting hit by something that clearly didn't touch you is is uh you know that's <laughs> it's really up to the viewer game. if they take issue with that. Yeah, exactly. I just, yeah, I think you'd be very hard-pressed for people to not get frustrated when that's happening to them in the game. All about precision, timing, for blocking and attacking. It's like, yeah, I love it when the hitboxes don't match the models. That's just what I want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is the difference between a game is trying to subvert my expectations and when a game is just lying to me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, some people might like it, so... 
Somehow that's a response to that. Uh, the DC EU heroes have a higher kill count and are just as cynical about human lives as the Watchmen. I see the similarities. Thanks for the good laughs. I'm not as familiar with the Watchmen, but I know that like the comedian is a a piece of shit that kills people, right? Like, mm -hmm. I haven't read Watchmen or watched the film. I assume there's some some nice yeah, ones I in the Watchmen, right? There's some, some good ones. As in, like, good old-fashioned nice heroes and stuff. Yeah, I, I would want that anyway. But I, I, yeah, I haven't read it. I do intend to. It's eh. one of those ones, you know. Yeah. Um, hello guys, and Mola. Oh wait, I read that one, but hello. Um, Hi. Avengers best, three out of seven. I mean, I, I, mean, I, that's, I think it's better than it's, three out of seven, but... Yeah, I'd give it more than three out of seven myself, but yeah. Uh, take a shot every time Brown Table puts a word on screen, too, if the word being emphasized makes no sense. He does put words on screen a lot. It's yes, so unnecessary. Yeah, they're often funny. It's often distracting. Uh, this guy makes Kojima sound seem down to earth in comparison. You can find that a lot on who we cover. Monday EFAP. What is this madness? Yeah, apparently we did that one on a, a Monday. Yeah, it's crazy. Hot take Avengers is best. It's three out of five. Let the salt flow. It's a six uh, out of ten. That's good. I mean, six that's, out of ten. That's easy to accept. Pretty it's good. A, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a writing for that film. Big ups, Liquid Richard. Big ups. Liquid Richard. Salutations, greetings, and ahoy hoy to the ambitious canine of humor with the glasses. Your jolly oh, takes leave. You. Oh, your jolly takes leave me with splitting sides of joy. Oh, that's Come good on. to hear. At this point, just put every 26th word on screen for emphasis in Gadelb. Oh, I don't know. That's the Actually, do really randomized. Every, every 26th so word. It could just be a uh, or the. I think the way that Das Bullshit <laughs> yeah. was doing it um, eventually was just, he just randomly, when he was editing, was just like, I guess I'll use this word, this word, and. Um, I feel like that's indicative of the thought process, the blind, <laughs> you know, like, th I feel like there's not much more thought put into which word to put in other than, oh, you know what, this one. Like, it wasn't in the script, you know? I can believe that they have a very noble intent, dare I say, with... They'll be like, say, you know, you're, you're doing a section on Tony's character, and then you go... When it comes to Tony Stark, there is a consistent element of, um, I don't know, re uh, redemption. Redemption comes up on screen because they're like, well, this whole section's gonna be about that. That word encompasses the character. I need it to be emphasized. And just be like, do you though? <laughs> well, it, it's a it's a matter of need versus want, you know. Seems much more like it's the thing they're doing because everyone does it, and those are the words you do, right? As opposed to they do it because yeah. that's what you do. Because funny enough, I think I used words on screen in uh, TFA Part Four, but it was specifically because I was like, here are five arguments that I t typically hear in defense of Ray's. Um, ability to do a fucking mind trick without even knowing what the force is. And then, so I had the five come up in words, and then four fade while one stays, and then that one fades while number two comes back up. As a sort of just like, in case you needed reminding of which argument I'm dealing with sort of thing. That just seems yeah. to be, it's a very pragmatic approach compared to redemption. There's definitely ways where it helps. I mean, I got myself like a, the whiteboard assets so yeah. that I would be able to write things down. It can be very useful. You just don't want it to conflict with the words you're saying. Um, read Solid Man on Amazon. It's basically Iron Man with the voice of Vegeta from DBZA. Am I right or am I wrong? Starfight. You may say hi to Rag. Oh, hello. Well, there you go. If, if that sounds like it's up your alley, go, go right ahead. Apparently it's on Amazon. <clears throat> Muller, I'm working on a response to your unbridled rampage. I'm trying to keep it within EFAP standards, though it's going to be a while before done. Very well. Yeah, I think that that video is the one that I got the most responses to. I ruffled the most feathers. 
which is fine. Yes, because that film was bad. This is the thing. But people think it's good. I um, I guess it would be like, which film do you think has the least sort of chance of being defended? And it's like, Oof. well, Night of Cuts is gonna be up there. It's a pretty bad movie. We count you fat movies. I mean, there's stuff like Mulan oh, just ones I've made videos on because like for expectation of responses. Because I'm pretty sure the Fallen Kingdom one I did it got loads of responses because people were annoyed with it, and I was just like, damn. But I it's thought that movie was yeah. just abominable. <laughs> That but movie hey, is yeah. a, oof, often maybe it isn't uh, tied to how good the movie is, and it's tied simply to the, the fans of it and how they feel about videos that sort of besmirch the name of the of the film. I mean, Snyder versus people, you know they're crazy. Oh, you, yeah, that, I pissed off a lot of them. They're the worst. <laughs> they, they're definitely up there. They get uh, they get very fucking passionate uh, in a bad way. Um, uh, also, hi, Ragu. Please put your white sauce on my noodle, Daddy. Ooh. -woo. Oh, my goodness gracious. White sauce on the noodles. Yeah, you never know what you get in Super Chats. Some like the sauce white. Some like it red. I think an argument can be made. I'm Oler and Rags, and the EFAP crew. Hello. Hello to you. Been a fan of you both since before EFAP started. Question, have any of you nice. fellas watched Designated Survivor on Netflix? It's some top tier rat if I do say so. Uh, I have, yeah. Oh. Um, I'm not sure that I agree. Is... I like it, but uh, I liked it. Um, but I'm not sure how well I think it would hold up, honestly. Yeah. What's it about? Uh, Kiefer Sutherland plays, uh, Designate, so it's, it's he, uh, the, the premise of it is that he's, like, Department of Housing or whatever. He's the designated survivor on uh, State of the Union, the guy who's not allowed to be there just in case something happens and then capital gets blown up. So president, vice president, all the politicians uh, get killed and he becomes the president of America because he's the line of succession. And so it's basically just about this guy who has never had ambitions of being president having to be president in a very chaotic time. It's a cool idea. I'm not sure yeah. how well I would consider it because it, it's... It, it's a network TV show, so there is overarching plots, but it's definitely thing comes up and gets resolved in the episode. Thing comes up and gets resolved in the episode. Hmm. When, uh, I, miss I think those. the problems. Or, yeah, long well, I, yeah, I guess, but it's just that in this case, I think it's, um, mm, I don't know. I think it's a demand well. more serialized format. I but good. I haven't seen it in a while, so who knows? Perhaps it is a miracle of TV. Oh no, Dawn flashback sexual harassment. Well, oh no. I don't know. Uh Folding Ideas video on the Snyder Cut that was made before the cut was announced correctly predicted everything, including its problems. Interesting. I have not seen it. Very interesting. Um Critical Drinker just released. It with the Super idea that we were talking about earlier about coming out with those videos that talked about the sequel trilogy. Before they came out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, f Critical Drinker just released a critique of Starship Troopers. You guys should have Saw gone on to review it. I enjoy both creators and I think it'd be fun because they have very different views on it. See, so here's the thing. I think that there would be room to interpret that as, like, hostile, but I think it would be great to have them both watch the film and then bring them on at the same time to discuss the film. And, uh... Which interpretation holds up with the information provided from both sides? With the uh, Brinker and Sargon? Hopefully in a very non-hostile mm -hmm. way. I don't see why it would be hostile. Like it's I see it as an opportunity to 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 learn and grow and listen to perspectives. But I imagine it would be seen as like, oh no. Trying to trying to steal some feelings. They'd be like, no. We are the feeling stealers. True. That's I us. would be uh I'd be curious to see if Drinker was compelled by um, uh, Sargon's video. That still exists on YouTube, right? As far as I know. I, unless he took it down for whatever reason. Or it got taken down. I don't know. But Mula, his money. Sargon's video was really good. I think he'd be... seemed pretty tight. Uh, yeah, well, I, I was uh, I was pretty convinced by it. And it's kind of, this kind of thing where I, it felt to me that... I was like, oh yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, that's true too. And that 
I'd sort of just come to accept the uh, the common understanding of the film because I was just like, well, yeah. And I was like, well, actually, hmm. Um. Are you there, Frankie? Yeah, I'm here. Portugal used to be a country of Brazil. I think that's why you got confused. Hola, trapos. Directed at you. I don't know if the, you have any memory that, of that. I didn't know that. Um, I don't remember the. I don't know speak why. Portuguese I would... in Brazil. Oh, I'm, I know. What was I confused? Because I know that Brazil. Sorry, I'm, now I'm getting. I was mixed. Yeah, I know that. I know Probably that the reason why they speak names or something. Because yeah, they speak Portuguese in Brazil because Brazil was part of Portugal, like it was a colony of Portugal, whereas like basically the rest of South America was part of Spain, in one way or another. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess the problem is the context of why that came up is like a year old now. <laughs> I have no idea why that came up. Oh yeah. Context. Mm -hmm. Come on. Uh, Mola, here's money. I just want to say Southpaw is right about Spider-Man 2. Um, yeah, I think so too. I, uh, I was quite surprised to see a lot of what I had essentially missed as issues for that film, though there were a couple of, like, things that I think most people were like, hmm, on with that film and some stuff. Um, I think my favorite one, though, still, and I, I don't know if this was even a thing I held previously to, to that video, but, um, throwing a car at Peter when he's supposed to be kidnapping him, slash, getting information out of him. That's just funny. Like... Someone messed up. A little bit, yeah. Um, yo, EFAP on my day off, hell yeah. Love you guys. Hello, Rags. Hi there. Um, at Fringy, Portuguese is just loud Spanish. My father speaks both. Any we know when he's speaking Portuguese, lol. I have no idea why this came up. No, I don't either. <laughs> Um, Invincible Episode 6 was tiz me as hell. It's so bad it's inspiring me to do a video on the season. Oh boy. This is what I meant about how the, uh, the Arcane recommendations. I think we only ever had one super chat saying Arcane's not that good. Meanwhile, the Invincible ones were like all stellar and then they just sort of... Started, Stopped. Started t t well, they started to turn like... The Invincible's not that good, guys. And some are like, you know what? It's bad. And this one says it's tizzy. Like goodness. All over. Um Hail Ragler. Hello. An EFAP on my birthday? No way. Also Rai Hags. Oh right. Uh how's the Mando vid so far? Uh it's got a lot of work done in it. After realizing that Falcon the Winter Soldier sucks, I'm done with the MCU. I'm only seeing Guardians 3 and maybe 4 Thor, but only for muscular Natalie Portman. Mmm. Alright. Well, Fair it's enough. still not out yet. <laughs> but, uh, but we get there. Uh, hi everyone, and Rags. Oh, hello. Just wanted to say, Kibikins is having problems with the site. He's in need of help. Seems like he can't afford it right now. I did have a speak to him back then. Hope he's doing alright these days. Uh, the only thing I want updated right now on EFAP.me is just more comments in the Hall of Fame because some really deserve to be in there, you know? Yeah, but Certainly Phil Mento, he's one. earned it. Yeah. <laughs> he's worked really hard, okay? <laughs> um, is the Snyderverse worse than the sequel trilogy? Ooh. I don't... Mm. Hmm. That's a tough one. So I think the element that, that the sequels one. have that Snyderverse doesn't is it's ruining stuff that came before it. In a sense, it's ruining like Batman and Superman's sort of I guess reputation. What I would say about Snyder is that it's the opposite of it. It just taints what comes afterward because it's all kind of connected to it. Well, sort of the sequels, right? Why well, I guess is what I'm saying is like the thing about the sequels they tarnish what came before and it's like and what will come after but uh yeah that's what um that's what the Snyder cut's done essentially. Which one would you go with? I actually don't know. Um, I legit I, don't know either. I think I might I think go I... with sequels because I remember Batman v Superman scoring like a three. <laughs> so that alone, I I don't know. I actually don't know. That's a tough one. Yeah, I agree. That is a tough mm. one. Yeah. 
Uh, hey guys, Rags, have you seen Red Line? Red Line? No. You should. It's a wild, amazingly animated movie, and I'm sure you guys would love it. Let me see Red Line. I've not uh, seen it or heard of it. The 2000... 2009? Looks like it's a... Let's see. A daredevil driver is determined to compete in Redline, the most popular race in the galaxy. The race only occurs every five years, but in order to participate, he must overcome the Mafia, the government, and even love. Wow. How about that? Hope he makes it. Yeah, I hope so too. Um... Yeah, never heard of it. Oh. I've never heard of it. EFAP lads of Tor. Imagining EFAP regulars on a stereotypical stag do is a funny image to say the least. Keep it up and high rags. Hello? Uh, the racial stuff in that last episode of Falcon the Winter Soldier. Oof. The racial stuff in the last episode? Last episode. Is it the do better stuff or the. I oh, like I think. He says, um, he says something like, I am a black man in, yeah, he says something like that. I figured that was, is the, the War Machine, stuff. where you immediately think of War Machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I don't, you guys forgot, doesn't mean that the world should have forgotten. <laughs> no, I think that everyone's forgetting about Iron Man 3, it's for the best, for you. Yeah. Um, getting ready to make the 19 hour drive from Seattle to Vegas and queuing up a good EFAP playlist to pass the time. First time moving to a new state. Hey. Nice. Good luck. I hope that all worked out and that you're alright. <laughs> yes, in the, in the wake of whatever happened. Uh, there might be a lot of reading from chat, but I'm interested to see you guys break down Winter Soldier. Oh, we did. And, um, yeah, because of the the nature of copyright because uh, I was just constantly trying to show shit from it it was like probably best to, to, to do it with the, the format of um, I think I had Vegas open actually that's how I was doing it um, yeah it went over great everyone was very happy with our coverage and agreed nothing horribly controversial in terms of the entire comment section saying you're insane happened okay <laughs> it's totally fine it wasn't even, I think, people were that annoyed at critic being critical of Winter Soldier, it was the notion that Far From Home was better. That was uh, upsetting a lot of people. That was a controversial one, but, yeah. Um, hello all. More importantly, hi Rags. Hello. I'm a blazing bisexual myself, but have trouble asking females out. Any tips would be appreciated. Asking them out. It's very female specific, shall we say. Um, tips. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know there's an aspect of. I know there's an aspect where it seems really cliche, but I mean, being yourself is a pretty good strategy to use unless you're just a shit person. Um, maybe that's why it's such good advice. It sort of sorts itself out. But yeah, it's things to say. It's it's so specific to the person. It's just so specific to the person. Um, things to say that. Yeah, I don't know if I can help you there. Just be a good. Maybe the key isn't what to say, but just displaying that you can listen and you can ask questions and. Oh, yeah, if you're going to say things, say questions. Bitches love questions. Especially if they relate to things that she has specifically talked about or has just mentioned. You know, it, don't, like, fake interest in a malicious way. But people, you know, show that you have an interest in the things that she says. And so ask questions based around that. Or um, even if it doesn't necessarily need clarification, maybe every once in a while ask for clarification so that she... You know, she knows that you are paying attention. You know, things things of that nature. Oh, there you go. Um, ask Meme the Christmas vs. Halloween question already? I assume we did. I don't know what he said, though. 
random, but in Lord of the Rings, Fellowship, why wouldn't Saruman kill Gandalf in the first fight? Does Saruman know he could come back? Also, hi, Ragzipu. No, he wants him to join Hello. him. Hello. He, um, he even he indeed. impels him on the top of the tower. But, uh, he has a chance here. Yeah, to, to join him. But he won't, because he's Gandalf. Yeah. Um, I, I love the line Gandalf gives him before leaving the, uh, there's only one Lord of the Rings and he does not share power. Cool. Oh, yeah. Hey, EFAP crew. Hello. Hey. Hello. Maul, I hope you enjoyed the new Moopa comic I made. No more, no more. Oh, I remember the no more one. It's based on the, uh, the, the reading we were doing with Jay Longbone. Remember there's, there's huh? some old dude in a bed going, no more. Yes, I do. I do oh, remember that. Stuff. Uh, watching Invincible and at about episode five and six, they introduce a broken power and a dumb character choice that essentially dooms the show. So disappointed. Oh man. Oh damn. Oh damn. I think this will probably encourage like new super chats to be like, you know, the guys saying that about Invincible, they're not, they're not right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, have any of you read the final chapter of Attack on Titan? If so, what did you think about it? I think that's a no, no from all of us, right? I have not read it. Yeah, I'm afraid we're out of the loop on that one. I heard it went through a bit of a flume controversy in relation to story choices, but I can't even remember if that was the show or the manga that's getting that criticism. I certainly hear that. And then Just Right made a video that was, from what I gather, insane, and then he deleted it. Uh, related to, like, Attack on Titan being pro-fascist or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some weird political video that he took down. I, I remember Dev was talking about how it was nuts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, his audience were not happy with that one. It's, um... Yeah, I don't know. It's just when you... You make things fit. And if they don't, sort of thing. Yeah. Um... Although I don't disagree with it, Death of the Author annoys me because people will use it as an excuse to read a bunch of dumb crap in a text to accuse the author of something, e.g. Tolkien was racist because orcs are black. They can do that and they can be wrong, because their references will yeah, be shit. You can still argue the points with them, but I mean, there's, there's kind of no getting around Death of the Author as a, a, well, a concept. Even if Death it's of the Author fun. wasn't in play, people could still... So, let's take Tolkien, for example, and all he ever said about allegory was that it exists in my books. I ain't telling you what it is. If he says that, yeah, exactly. then we're going to need more sources, aren't we? Yeah. So, like, Death of the Author doesn't stop people from doing those kinds of interpretations. Uh, I just I just think that we should knock him down with the references. Be like, so what? why are orcs black? And it's like, and then they explain, well, because... And then you're like, yeah, go on. <laughs> and they're yeah. like, um, you know what? Actually, I don't want to justify this. You're like, yeah, you probably shouldn't, should you? Um, negative 5 out of 10 for Zilla vs. Kong. The story is watching paint dry and even the monster fighting is not really worth watching. Why do people like this movie? Oh, wow. Damn, I've only really heard that it's really dumb fun. That's what I typically hear. hear, yeah. So, I don't know, we'll, we'll discover the truth on that eventually in terms of what we're dealing with. Is it a fun, fun, dumb monster movie? Or kind of a King of the Monsters where it's like five minutes of monsters and the rest is people being stupid. We'll find out. Um, you mean Kung Flu Man and the Forgotten Iron Man Baddie? I, I, I don't, uh... No idea what that is. No clue. Forgotten Iron Man Baddie, are they talking about Mandarin? Are they? I don't know, well, whatever it was in response to, I don't know what that is anymore. The US Top Gear was an embarrassing pile of crap. That's what I've heard, I didn't even watch it. But I've, yeah. the replacement Top Gear Not was also good. that, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Grand Tour, however. Follow those three up. Yeah, you, you don't want to have to follow them. They should have just called it. I know they were trying to cash <laughs> in on the name, but you should have just ended it and started something else. Because we'll just call that it. That show I don't was know, those well, three. What can we do? <laughs> what can we do? That show just flat out was those three. Uh, hey Mubler, I can't really remember, but what was your stance for your position in the Discord? I remember you saying you're more hands off. Yeah. I don't really have any control over the running of the Discord. Uh, I'm more so a user. In a sense, it's kind of like the Reddit. It's run by fans because I do not have the time to police a, a Discord. Um, so, 
but I, I obviously I have what is perceived to be the highest rank, but I assume because it's just a Discord that relates to my work and EFAP's work. Uh, rhino cheese. Nice. I guess you can make rhino milk. You can get cheese from it, yeah. I would figure. That makes sense. Makes sense to me. Um, also, finally saw your rampage. Good work, you both. I assume they mean me and meme, yeah, because I was Redditor, just remembering. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, Black Widow is the one where there's three people working on that one. Keeps getting more nuts, eh? But then mm -hmm. back down to one for TFA four. I'm the father. I think that came out between them. Yeah, it's hard to remember at this point. Uh, the Top Gear crew is hilarious. Like, they did some wacky ass borderline offensive shit and would laugh and y'all remember the Mexican controversy? Classic. It wasn't, but it wasn't borderline offensive. Um, they did some. They were spicy sometimes. Yeah, they're, they're, there's plenty of jokes they come up with that I. You, you get the feel, the need to be like, I must tell friends about this. Yes. It's so offensive, you had to tell your friends. Exactly. Uh, hope the EFAP hosts and chat are doing great today. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, me too. Hope you're doing great too. Uh, why no EFAP League PFPs? You mean League of Legends or something else? League of Legends? I don't know what else that'd be. Oh, Justice League? Oh, right. I guess because well, we were. Be satisfied. Yeah, because we did we eventually did we put them on for the Snyder Cut. I know that much. Yeah, we did. Yeah, you got four hours of the damn things. <laughs> More than that, probably between the two. And I think we used it for the Snyder EFAB. I can't remember. I think so. I can't remember. remember. No. Good evening, gamers, know. and also hi Rex. Hello. I was thinking of making a D&D &D monster based on the long man when I thought of a fun question. What D&D &D fantasy creature would encapsulate you as a person slash content creator? Tism Flopples. Tism Flopples sounds like it could be a D&D &D monster, but I'm not that familiar with the bestiaries. And I am way um, less familiar than you are, so... I thought, I thought the question was going to ask, I, I want to put a monster inspired by long man, what, you know, tell me about it, what should it have, what should it do? But yeah, I'm I'm not familiar with the bestiary off the top of my he uh, head. Head, that's what it's called. My head. Mm, head yeah. To um, to 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 really say, unfortunately. Um, I've got the books. I just haven't really poured through them. I haven't pondered them yet. I I did some skimming, so I could tell you just some things. But yeah, I just can't help you out there, unfortunately. More general questions I might be able to, but. Not necessarily specifics. Um, hey, love my ass off. Don Bless. All hail the Cosmic Chicken. Hi, Rugalkins Bigson. Oh, hello. Okay. Okay. Check out Northern Exposure. It's a hidden 90s gem about a doctor contracted to work in a small town in Alaska. Brilliant characters and story. Never heard of it, but... Fair enough. Northern Exposure. Hmm. I have not heard of that, no. Oh. Uh, Rags, is it worth it to briefly date a hot but hardcore lefty girl if all I want is her kitty? Wow. Oh. Um. Is it worth it? You shouldn't deceive people like that. Um. If if you are if you are honest with her and you just say, I'm just I just want some you know a, a physical relationship. I don't want a romantic relationship. Do you want to hook up here and there? That's one thing. But you shouldn't you shouldn't deceive people. Also, real world lefties and righties are mostly normal people. They're not like Twitter. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, they're, they're generally like all insulated online sort of um, you know, yeah. Yeah. If you. If you find, generally in the real world, if you find people who are willing to really go out of their way to antagonize you based on some political position, then that's a person, like, that's a, that that's like a, kind of a good sign you should stay away from them, you know? Um, but, yeah, you don't, don't deceive people for that purpose. Just be honest about what you want and, um, 
just say, hey, you know, da da da. Would you be interested in da da da? You, and, and if she's not down for it, she's not down for it, and that's that. And there are other fish in the sea, and that's uh, that's how it is. Or get on a, one of those websites. I hear those work out really well. Uh, check out Hot Wheels World Race and Accelerators. Races. Hi, Ragu. I didn't know there were Hot Wheels uh, movies or games. I don't even know. Another Hot Wheels games. I don't know if they're. Accelerators sounds like another like brand, I guess, is it? I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Sounds nice, though. Hello, all my n words. Keeping the memory of Wolf alive and supporting you financially. Hi, Rags. Kick J and watch Ronald the Barbarian for EFAT movies. Ronald the Barbarian. Hmm. Great name for a barbarian. Uh, I know about Dave the Barbarian. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it just says release the EFAP cut, which that did happen. It did indeed. Do this, the EFAP version. I even ended up making a video for the Snyder Cut. See, the Snyder Cut was just that good that that much coverage was required. Remember when Flash was like touching someone's hair as they were falling to their death? That was weird. That was weird. Well, he grabbed the he grabbed the wiener. Uh, well, so that was really weird up until you realize he's apparently grabbing it so that he can justify being near the dog because he's feeding it positive or whatever. Okay. But when he grabbed the... I think we laughed our fucking heads off when he took the time to grab that out of the fucking... Just wow. That whole scene, man. People never, loved that scene. We were like the only ones that were like, what the fuck was this? <laughs> like, this, this is, is absurd. 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 Fringy, do you want to be Captain America? And if so, why don't you have any self-respect? Uh, what, what, do I want to be Captain America? It doesn't, doesn't really appeal to me. Um, kind of almost doesn't make much sense, given that I'm not an American. Hmm. Uh, I guess Captain Australia, if that were, But even then, I don't know if it appeals to me, like, to be a superhero. Yeah, Seems I mean, you like got some, you got videos to make. Like, you can't be doing superhero yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. I can't. If I'm doing superhero stuff, then how can I be sitting here staring at this massive timeline? Exactly. Having to cut all this audio in. I mean, I, uh, 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 and Mola, thanks for the surprise EFAP today, and high ranks. Hello. Did you guys hear that Ralph removed his Joker video? Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's ever put anything yeah. out to explain why. But we can obviously assume it's because it didn't go over very well. Um, it's the worst video he's ever made, and that's, that's trust me, treat that as a nice thing I'm saying, because like I, I, I know he's capable of a lot better than that. It was just a weird video. And seriously, the fucking criticism of Wow, you have to involve Batman stuff, and it kind of ruins it. Like having Bruce and Alfred. Like, you can't just have the just movie stand on its own. Point, <laughs> you I know, just, it just You're just appealing to the meta really more so than anything in the film. Yeah, like how does it ruin the film at all? Uh, is Rags rich off Dogecoin now? Man, this really updated the. Uh, this, the this yeah, that was a while ago. I'm guessing you hey, didn't invest in Doge. Coming right? back. Coming back. Or maybe yeah. I did. Maybe I'm maybe hiding my did. power level. Oh. Uh, I got a celery stick know. in one hand and a glass of orange juice in the other. Let's fap. All right. Mm, healthy snacks, sort yeah, of. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's. Depending what great. orange juice is, uh, what, what orange juice you've got. And, uh. Yeah, and, 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 and that about does it for catching up with this, as I have dubbed it, the Justice League Super Chat catch-up. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Get the, Exciting. Uh, the correct name on that for whatever EFAP it pertains to. Um, but, you know, thank you for joining us. And um, until next time, of our journey of, of catching up on chats, yes, I suppose. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks so much for listening. We yes. will see you next time. Bye, bye. Absolutely. Bye.